All right, guys, welcome for another episode of the Group Up Podcast. I am here with a cast of awesome creators ready for the great support debate. We did the tank debate. We had that talk. We had the therapy session, the whining. Now the counter argument, the rebuttal. The accused will get their chance to speak. The support role, the apparently broken role will have their say. So let me introduce my cast and we will have this discussion. So in the top right, unfortunately, COVID it up, but still I'm very grateful that she's turning up for this call. Please forgive her for her, her throat or anything, or if she's a little bit quiet, you will understand that she's obviously feeling a bit unwell. What's up, SK? Hello, I'm dying. Thank you for being here, SK. Hi, dying. To, <laughs> hi, dying. I'm SAV. If you have to go, please let me know at any point. That's totally okay. okay I appreciate I you being here. Just tell me. And we will sort it out. The rest of it is our problem. In... I should be fine. Okay, awesome, awesome. Right. We look for. I, I wanted you here. You know, you I really value your opinion, so I'm glad you could make it. So thank you for turning up. In the bottom right is my man, Karku Games. Karku, what's up? What's up? Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. From, fresh from Toronto, the grand finals, Mr. Yep. Worldwide again. Actually, it's I, not I worldwide did not for get you. sick. Sk Sk is the only other person in this call that that went to grand finals. Um. And she got sick. I didn't because you know Lucky I told my white I told my white blood cells to work overtime because I was ready. Car, unfortunately, just... I pinged it. I pinged them and I told them, "Yay, <laughs> Mine are fight striking. that shit off." Yeah, fight at, that shit off. At white blood cells, and they didn't have it muted. Thankfully, they didn't have that Discord ping yeah, muted. Exactly. All right. Well, in the top left is my man Boger, the Bingus merch runner. So, Boger, want to show off your Bingus merch? Bingus. <laughs> So some of you might be wondering why Boger's here, because you will have the real OGs of the podcast. I remember about two years ago, Boger being on one of the tank debates. In fact, the great first great tank debate was with Boger. But you've converted now recently, Boger, have you not? I've probably played more support than I've played tank. Now I just queue up both support and tank. ML abuses that because he duels with me for short queues because we get either two supports or support and tank. It's easy to how dare he how dare he but yeah the world's most famous life weaver player perhaps the only one and True. recently been grinding iliari too so thank you and your input will be very valuable as the dual role flexor and True. for her first appearance in the podcast i believe in the bottom left is emma Lyeth, grandmaster support player resident genji hater yeah except i'm in my genji era right now and it's oh my god it's terrible yeah so your your chat did you did a subathon and your chat has forced you to play genji for a while right Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, day six today of being a Genji main. Well, it should should hopefully give you a fresh perspective on on. The, have you have you learned anything? Are you like do you feel different about Genji? Uh, it actually makes me hate Genji players more. Really? Why? Because it is so easy to get health packs as Genji, <laughs> and mine don't. <laughs> Damn. All right. Here I thought you'd be like, you know what? Well, I understand now why Genji players I do The only thing that I do understand is uh, the nano blade because it is so hard to get kills with blade without nano. Fair. Okay. So yeah, this is what it's all about, getting fresh perspectives. And that's why I brought the squad on over here. I think, Boger, we might be a little bit echoing in your in your thingy again. Just something to, to keep an eye on. But um, all right, guys. We are, you know, you. know, I'm sure you've heard all about it. Okay. Yeah, I think that's... Boger, Boger, my friend, can you turn push to talk on? Okay. I can hear you again. In yeah. Me, or I can hear me. Talk. Push to talk. Okay. So as I was saying, you guys will have no doubt heard the the accusations, the rumors, whatever you want to call it, that support is busted. Support is the baby droll. Support has it easy. So to start us off with, I want your opening thoughts on the state of support. Do you agree, disagree? Because that was certainly the sentiment of the tank debate. That support is overpowered. Where do you feel it's at? I'll start with Karku. Karku, tell us. Okay, uh, that that was that was in short at the at the end of the whole tank debate. That's what they said. They said this the support. What did they? What was their thoughts? So on they DPS? basically, they I didn't listen to the whole thing. So they just okay, summarize okay. it for everybody who didn't sure. listen to the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair. So, so I think overall, basically, the tank players were saying that a lot of their value is negated by the support role, who are kind of disproportionately control a lot of power. They're able to do other things as well as, you know, they they can DPS, they can heal, they can tank in a way. They can kind of do a bit of every role. Whereas for okay. the tank role, they're kind of, they build up to these one moments of play. They spend their whole round waiting for this thing to happen. And then the support comes in with a Suzu, Immortality, whatever it is, and kind of ruins their day. And then that's like, that's it. As for the DPS, I don't think they had too much to say in terms of like how the DPS is stifling tank. But it was certainly the support where they had a lot of their complaints. Okay. 
I do think some supports fill, fill that, but uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate. This is, I guess, the whole point of debate. That tanks can also do that. There are some tanks, certainly, where you have to stand there and just, t you know, you do your job and you you make space, and then all of a sudden, yeah, Suzu or whatever comes in. But, like, Suzu belongs to one hero. There's some heroes that can't do DPS very well. Actually, there's a few of them. Um, and then th and then when you make the argument with, with tanks... Uh, you know how they can't do anything. There's also there's definitely tanks that can do a lot of damage, like Zarya, like Junker Queen. They can rack it up and and, and top the uh, top the damage charts. So I don't know. I don't fully buy into this that you can't do anything on tank. I disagree with that statement. Um, and then then them saying that supports are overpowered. I would say some are. So I don't disagree with that part. Uh, for example, I still think BAP is overtuned, and this is coming from someone who like plays a ton of Baptiste. I actually still think he's like one of the best supports in the game, despite the recent nerfs where they like cut the healing, um, the flat healing amount initially with the regen burst or whatever. You know what's crazy? That wasn't even in Overwatch 1. They added that randomly yeah. at the end of Overwatch 2 beta, where it's like, oh, if they're less than half health, why don't we just double the healing from the regen burst flat? And then they just cut it back a bit. That didn't exist in Overwatch 1. And um, I think the damage in Overwatch 1 is also 24 per bullet. So then when you triple burst into the stomach or body shot, it's like 72 damage. But right now it's 25 per bullet still. And that's, uh, what, 75. That's a major breakpoint, by the way, especially um, on Tracer or, you know, anything like that. So um, I, think they're, I think the tank debate, they kind of, like, wrapped support in a giant, like, they're overtuned, but they kind of like throw every support in that category, but that's just simply not true because there's a lot of different supports that fill different roles and niches. And then same with tanks. There's different tanks that fill different roles and niches. Yeah, Ryan, at this current state, you probably have to stand there and take the, you know, take all the hits mm -hmm. and do feel like you do nothing. Same with Roadhog. You just stand there and just you just soak a gazillion damage. And, you know, I know you had some Ryan, former Ryan mains and some Roadhog players in the tank debate, and they're going to feel that way because that's just the heroes they play. For me, I play the heavier damage uh, supports. You know, I can top charts with with BAP. I could play some Malari. I could play Ana. Play Kiriko, and you could definitely top those off. But if we have some Life Weaver players here, or some Mercy players, or some, um, I was gonna say Lucio, but I actually seen SK's Lucio like kind of like cook a little bit on like that certain play style where you just like are actually damaging a lot. It's a lot of chip damage. It's very like pokey with the thing, but there's no like mm -hmm. strong TTK like time to kill for uh, for the Lucio. Sometimes it just depends on who you're going for. A lot of times sure. you just spam main, and those green Oreos hit the tank. So yeah, <laughs> you'll inflate your damage numbers a little bit. And same with more, they get inflated a bit. But I think there's a little bit of a a, a disconnect between like all supports right. being super OP and being the 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 main role anyways i talked for too long let's no no so so we're so they're just so yeah you, you feel like there's a the general generalization here of the support too much of a generalization we can tune some of them back but not like it's it's right. not everybody we're, we're homogenizing the role here and we'll, we will like we, in this podcast we will obviously we'll discuss wider big picture support but we're going to talk about each individual support as well so we'll have time to break down which of those you think are broken and which are under tune i want to take it to our newcomer emma Elias next emmy I feel like you're going to come with the heat here. You're going to come defend the support players that the tank players are talking some shit. Oh, you'd be Just wrong, opening actually. thoughts. Opening thoughts. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I actually think supports have the best kits in the game and some of the strongest kits in the game. I think that um, Suzu, MO, I mean, even Ananade, like I think all of those things are extremely strong. Go but down. I don't think things are helpless. I think uh, it's a little... I don't want to say dramatic. I know there's a lot of tanks that are not good right now, but like Zarya is insanely unfun to play against because she literally negates everything. Like she's just not fun. But um, I get the Ryan mains and the Roadhog mains because they're terrible right now. Hmm. Interesting. This is not quite going high of hand. I know. Go... I, I actually think supports are insanely strong. <laughs> okay, you know what? I, I, I do too. Well, like, I do too because of the support passive, which does encapsulate or generalize yes, everything. That passive, didn't exist in Overwatch yes. 1. I remember re I rewatched some old Overwatch 6v6 footage, and I'm like, man, I got trickled down, tickled down by a tracer as an Ana, and I'm like, sitting at 110 health for like way too long. I'm like, do I nade myself? Like, burning your nade for yourself was so bad back then if you had to do it, and like, you know, it, it was just completely different. So I do think that passive is very strong. Sorry to yeah, cut you I off, but, uh... but no, you're good. I also think that the like without the passive, because like in the beginning of 
Well, I guess they still had the passive in the beginning of Overwatch 2, but they were like yeah. so bad in the beginning of Overwatch 2 because of how it played and how easy it was to just dive supports. And what was Ana it again felt... in the beginning? I don't remember, but Ana just felt terrible to play. I remember. I think that was like, I think it was because the game was new. I think it was the same. It was just two seconds before it it kicked in. Everyone's like, yeah, it's whatever. This passive doesn't feel great because DPS, it was overshadowed by the DPS passive at the time, which was good. Yeah, that's the movement speed. Everyone's like, wow, the support passive feels like shit compared to that. And I think it was just Plus, Dive was strong. Dive was Mm -hmm. strong. They had nerfed some aspects like Ana's sleep and stuff. And we obviously didn't have as many supports as we did. One of those new supports being my man, a life weaver, Bulger. You are the tank main converted. Are you going to defend the support category? Or are you also agreement that maybe some of the supports are overtuned and perhaps the support kits in general are very, very strong? Can you hear me fine? Hello, yes. mic check? Yes, right. perfect. I think that support is the most relaxing role in the game. I can tell you from, from experience, from playing tank and playing support, playing support is so chill. Like... It is so relaxing, especially if you play Life Viewer or something like that. You're just vibing, bro. You're just chilling. Playing tank is so stressful. I hate playing tank. Tank, like, you've already had your tank debate, so I won't talk about it too much. But, like, I don't know if support is broken or not. There's some supports that are really strong. But the sheer pressure you have when you're playing tank compared to when you're playing support is just not equal. Like, I... Some of you probably will disagree with me, but when you play tank, there's so many heroes that can counter you for any any tank hero you pick, for anything. Even if you play Zarya, Life Viewer can just counter every single ult you get. Uh, people can just go Bastion, Bastion just counters every tank, basically. And it's just so annoying, right? But when you play support, what counters Life Weaver? If somebody sucks against him, what counters Lari? No, nothing counters Lari. And then you have a second support that can peel for you. And you're just chilling, you know, like, especially if you deal with another support player, you're just vibing the entire game. I've dealt with ML a lot. I've had zero pressure on me throughout all of the games. Yeah, sometimes you get dove, but you can easily outplay getting, uh, you can easily outplay dives. You easily can outplay them if you just are smart about it. Like, in Overwatch 1, what would happen a lot is people would get hard focused when they played support by dive. You know, Winston Diva, Tracer, Genji, they would constantly dive you, you would die, you didn't have your support passive, like Kark, you said, you had to waste an ability to heal yourself. Right now, with the support passive, you're a one-man army, right? Like, you can't kill the entire team, not always. Sometimes you can if you play Laurie or if you play Baptiste. And but most of the time you're just chilling. Like there isn't anything that can actually counter. You can pick any support, in my opinion. Some support combos are really bad, obviously. But most of the time you can go anything and still win the game. Like as long as you play well, as long as your team is not throwing the game, you can win the game. And I think that is the main reason why support is being played so much more than being than tank. Because I can do whatever I want in support. I can go on a Life Weaver. I can go on a Zen, even though it's a little bit scuffed. I can go Life Weaver, Lari. I can go Life Weaver, whatever. It, it, it can work. But if your tank goes the wrong tank in the wrong situation, you just lose the game because he's just getting hard counting and that's it. And it never happens when you play support. It's just so much more chill to play support. Okay. Okay. So we're getting a picture that comment section are not going to be happy about. The comment section, I can hear it now. SCB, what is this fucking shit? I'm a support player. Uh, it's fucking hard. These tank players are whining and you got to cast the support players. We're all saying the role is a bit too much. SK, I don't don't think you're going to change the trend. But how do you feel just in general, big picture on support? I'm sorry to make it so everyone has the same opinions, but I do think a lot of uh, support has a couple heroes that are probably the most powerful in the game. And it's super chill to play too, like Boger said. Whenever I'm playing poorly, like my my aim is really bad on the day, I'm losing a lot of games on DPS, I just don't want to think anymore. I go support and I just win in like top 100 the fucking round. (laughs) Wait, am I allowed to curse? I'm sorry. Yeah, of course Um, you are. I curse plenty. But like, heroes like Bap, Ana, Ilari, Kiri, Brig, I think just have way too much impact. It's really funny playing Lucio now and sad, honestly, because it's just like, then if I was asleep at my keyboard playing a different hero, I would be getting more value than I am right now playing like I'm God's gift to Overwatch on this hero. It's hold on, I have to go. It's okay. Take your time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lately I've been playing Alari, Yadi, and out damage dealing my DPS. Um 
I feel a little guilty about it because <laughs> I'm a I'm a person that plays all of the roles. Like every season, I I put in hundreds of games on each role, so I I think I'm really in tune with like how powerful or how fun to play each role is. Support is what I do when I want to have fun and chill and like have easy games. DPS feels terrible right now. And moving on to the tank thing with the great tank debate, I'm going to say skill issue or hero issue with whatever their complaints are. Because I have been playing tank this season. I've been top 100 for the last like 60 games. I haven't noticed anything they're talking about. Like, if I'm having trouble, I simply swap. That is it. Like, if you play the right hero in the right situations, you can 1v2 anyone. You can delete everything. You do more damage than DPS. Plus, you have a huge health bar. You're literally a raid boss. I like, was going to say, you do, you can do high damage. Everyone says you just sit there and take it. But that's just like two or three tanks. Like, SK, which, which tanks do you play that can cook like the damage numbers? Queen, right? Season, Zarya? I'm playing Zarya. I'm playing a lot of Zarya. I was playing Queen before, but as I get higher, you have to be really good at her to get values. And I'm, I'm not as good as her at good at her as i need to be um orisa actually just melts people if you, you actually do so much damage on, on orisa Switches, you actually do yeah. so much damage on orisa actually people. and you're hard but to kill too it does suck my complaint is not about supports it's about dps yeah. if the other team goes bastion in may i simply cannot play the game anymore as tank and i don't think that has anything to do with supports um but like literally azaria i have one v4 the other team provided their tank is dead like it's ridiculous. Um, wait, I have more to say. Yeah. Um, it's okay. You can take your time to think about it. We can, we can also I come to it. it later. We can come to it I later. We'll be, there'll wait, be plenty. I remembered. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but um, I have noticed if I have bad supports, I cannot play the game. If my supports are playing suboptimal support comp, like lately, a lot of my supports have been playing Mercy, Yachty, I do not get to play the game. It is... I think tank can go, can go from the most fun experience in the game to the most boring experience in the game simply from having bad supports or the other team picking Bash and May or Bash and Sim. Um, but I will also say, I remember when Overwatch 2 first came out, most support players felt like it was a super underpowered role and were complaining a lot. I was not one of them. I, I will say that now. But I wonder what changed since then. Maybe those people are still saying the same thing. Who knows? There's three uh, new supports I, I that came that, out during that debate. The same thing. Yeah, there's three okay, so, support. So, when people are saying that, that was during the beta. We've had, literally had three new supports. Yeah, that was enter. really, really early Overwatch. So yeah, too. Emmy, let's yeah. let's elaborate then. So we've kind of, unfortunately, established a precedent that that all of you kind of roughly agree support is very powerful, very good, very good state, which is not a bad thing. You know, we don't have to arbitrarily pretend that support is weak if everyone who plays the role and then whose opinions I respect feel like it isn't and feel like it's very strong to quickly add in my my own experience as well i got gm1 on support the other day mostly playing bap and ana so i think i also agree that like the value you get is insane like the amount of impact the when i play support i've also been flexing other roles and it's like super miserable this meta i think is particularly egregious as sk pointed out i think like that like i see a lot of bash and tor Bahanzo type shit and it's like when you're the other dps if you don't like mirror you just like you just lose because it's like you can't go. I, I like playing like Tracer and Genji. I like playing like heroes that require my brain to be on, not just like spamming at a, at a, at a corner. And you just like, you just get rolled by spam and people just shoving shit in your face. So it's like very, it's a very obnoxious meta, I think, which has exacerbated a lot of these issues. And I think for tanks, it's the same thing. It's like if they're running like Bash in May, as you said, SK, it's just like you just don't get to play the game. So I think there's a lot of compounding factors. But support, I think, feels great. Support, I feel, is like how many how the other roles should feel. Because whenever I play support, I come away at the end of a game and I'm like, if I lose, I'm like, okay, I definitely could have, I could have changed this fight, I could have changed that fight, I could have done this, I could have done that. When I play tank, sometimes I'll drop like 40 to 2, lose the game, and I'll be like, I have no fucking idea what possibly I could, like, I can't do everything in this game. And same with DPS sometimes, you just feel like there's nothing much you could have done, even if, you know, obviously I'm not a god. But all that being said, I want to unpack the sort of the evolution of the support, how we got here, and also maybe like what is fair, what is unfair about this state of support, and what maybe we can learn from it for if we want to help the other roles too. So, Amy, I want to come to you. What you said about uh, you were one of those people who felt like in the beta the support was underpowered. I think a lot of people felt that clearly. I know SK and Karki, you said you didn't. I'm, I'm going to assume Boger also didn't. 
But um, what was your feeling? Why did you feel like support felt really unfun or underpowered? I don't even think that it was they were underpowered. I think it was the way that the game was playing. Like, Ana couldn't keep up, because I'm an Ana main, Ana couldn't keep up with the fights because she didn't have any mobility. And it was just like any support that had mobility was the best support to play. And it just didn't feel good to have to play specifically not Ana because she couldn't move. I don't I don't remember. I think it was just the meta at the time, maybe. Like dive was really good. And um mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. She just didn't it was, have it the was movement. Winston, it was uh Lucio Kiriko, I remember, or something yeah. like that. And then and oh, then yeah, Mercy Kiriko, and then Mercy probably, Kiriko yeah. for the Sojourn Pocket. Oh well, Mercy's pretty mobile. Mm -hmm. Kiriko's mobile. Lucio's mobile. But it well, was even Lucio, Mercy Kiriko, can Winston. get chased down though. I think it was probably Kiriko. No, even I think it was even before Kiri. I don't remember. I have bad memory. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, Kiri, Kiri came okay. out with the game though in October. I swear. I unless yeah, so I'm Kiriko came out with the game, and you were right at the pro level. I believe it was Kiriko Lucio. Lucio. Uh, and but then the also Reaper. beta f felt really terrible, specifically. Yeah. So the complaints <laughs> came during the beta, which is where. Like, right. So yeah. I think I want to I want to paint this picture because I think what the narrative uh, that I see a lot is that supports complained at the start of Overwatch 2 as in the beta that they were underpowered, that they were unloved. They've been gradually buffed and had new heroes introduced, and now they've gotten to a point where everybody else is suffering. So let's. So I do want to unpack that. So you're right, Emilyth, in that it was the first beta when I remember Ana was being played at the pro levels, like Ana Winston Dive with Genji, I think, was strong, and Soldier, I think, was strong back then with some buffs that he'd gotten. But I remember this complaint. Lucio was, like, the strongest support in the game because he could actually, like, duel and survive. So, yeah, so talk me through, like, you felt it was very punishing and you felt like it was just, it didn't feel like what you wanted to play. Yeah, it was like, you just pretty much had to fend for yourself as on it, it felt like, because the game moved so fast. Like, Overwatch 2 was a lot faster when it first came out compared to Overwatch 1. So, like, you just had to adjust so much more quickly, and I think it made it really hard for Ana because she didn't have, like, the movement abilities that other characters have to keep up with the pace of the game. Right. And then now, I'm not, I guess just because the meta changed is probably why Ana feels better now, but I'm not sure. I mean, a lot has changed. It's hard to track individually. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if there was like a specific turning point. Maybe the DPS passive. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot changed. I mean, Boger, from your POV, how have you viewed the evolution of support from what we had in beta to, to where we have now? Like, how have you viewed that change you think it's like steps in the right direction or do you think like actually they've maybe made some missteps along the way i think support was good since launch i think it's still pretty good i think um i think the addition of the new heroes have you know shaken up things a lot but it, it's really hard to pinpoint if whether or not there are steps in the right direction i think the new support heroes are phenomenal i think kiriko and uh, Laurie and Lifeweaver, they all fit the niche. They're all so fun to play for the people that want to play them. I think it's really cool the design they've made behind those characters. And in that sense, I think it's in the right direction. But there's a lot of things I really despise about support. And this is the tank within me that really hates it. I really don't like the direction of... Back in the day when I played Overwatch 1, a lot of things that would happen was... I would dive in Ana and I would have to outplay the Ana sleep dart and the nade. You know, when I'm playing Winston, I had to do this and that to counter her abilities and she had to outplay me so she could sleep me. And there's a lot of back and forth. Now with support, what happens is you land an ability, it gets cleansed. It's like a lot of that depth, a lot of that counterplay in the sense that a lot of that thinking that you had to put in into executing a good play is gone. Yeah, you can wait for the Suzu. Yeah, you can wait for those abilities. Uh, right now, what's really annoying is with Laurie's pylon. I am diving the pylon on Winston instead of diving the supports. It is so obnoxious. There is no counterplay to it in the sense that, oh, I'll do this and that so I can counter the pylon not getting placed in that place. I need to dive the pylon and then I need to dive the supports. That is so annoying. It is not annoying for anyone else. It's really fun for the support player. Don't get me wrong. I know it's fun. It's really annoying when I'm playing really well with Ryan, for example, or I land a really big slam, or I start juggling someone, or like I'm about to, you know, I've played all of my cards right, they Suzu, right? And for a lot of people, they're gonna be like, oh, you need to counterplay the Suzu, you need to bait it out. Yeah, well, 
it sucks. It, it sucks in the sense that <sighs> back in the day, I will say it again, there was a lot of back and forth between supports. With Baptiste as well, he was one of the most annoying supports because he could counter your play after it happened by just placing a lamp. I hate that. I wish we would go back to... Oh, Life Reaver as well. I've been playing against Life Reaver a lot on tank. Let me tell you, that guy is annoying. As a Life Reaver <laughs> play, that guy sucks. He's so annoying because there is no steps to take to counter his abilities. All you can do is bait out the ability. And that cannot happen by itself, you know? Your team needs to help re help you with that, or you need to do something and, and then wait or execute something else. But it's so annoying to execute a good play and for it to get suzu'd, for it to get life reaver pulled, for it to get, uh, you know, uh, lamped. It, it is so, like, it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. It, it goes for any role. Like, if I'm playing, uh, if I'm playing Lari and I ult with Lari, it just gets suzu'd. It's so annoying. It's at least with Matrix, you can, you know, outplay the Matrix. You can be like, oh, okay, I'm going to bait out the Matrix. I'm going to wait it out. You know, say, oh, he's not using Matrix. Now I throw it. You know, there's some counterplay. You know, I'm going to bait out the Winston bubble. Then I'm going to throw it. With suzu, it's just like, oh, I threw it out. That's it. It's over. I'll outplay it. It's done. And again, you can say you can just wait it out. You can bait it out. But again, it's just such a boring, you know, like, you know, counterplay to that uh, there's a lot of mm. rant about it but i mean that is my thought yeah baiting stuff out is nothing new though but i do think it's because like tanks have they, they have that one less person to eat a cooldown for you so the game has actually become more team centric than anything in a 5v5 environment simply because one less person to take some of the support cooldowns away i mean lamp existed in overwatch one right and like break stuns and like you know if you weren't taking if one one of your tanks had to take one of the stuns then like the other person is free to do whatever so like I will say, yeah, tanks have to, like, you know, consider a lot more in this idea, a version of the game, which indirectly makes supports feel more powerful disproportionately to the tank players, because, you know, as a Winston, it's not, it's really hard for you to get the pylon, so now you have to tell your other DPS to find an angle to break the pylon, like your tracer or somebody to do it, but, like, in the 6v, if we had a 6v6, I don't know, I don't know why we're getting to a 6v6, 5v5 thing, but you this them. does play, this does play into, like, probably why supports feel stronger, to be honest with you. Like, if you're playing two different tanks, if, like, if you don't go for the pylon, somebody else is, or you have two tanks taking space, it opens up an angle for your DPS to take out the pylon, if that were the case. You know what I mean? So, so really yeah. quick. Well, well, I want to say something. Yeah. For everything that Overwatch 2 does, a lot of their characters are focused on the individual and it's no longer about team play and I think it's very obvious. So it's really annoying when you have to play old characters that were designed around team play. Like Winston, I I, I remember on Soul Soul, for example, said something about it. You need three charged shots to kill a, a pylon and it's impossible if you're on Reinhardt, for example. And there's these old characters and it's just so annoying to deal with these new abilities that are cent centered around the solo play of Overwatch 2 because... Junker Queen is solo centered, Kiriko is solo centered, uh, Lari is solo centered. You know, most of the characters are they, they, they're supposed to exist without the help of the team. And it's just so obnoxious. I agree with what Kark you said. I just, in a sense, I wish we added a lot more complexity to things if it makes sense. Like, for example, Ana is such a great character. I love Ana. And I'm not saying the new supports are bad. They're so fun to play. They're awesome to play. But I wish they added a character that added complexity and layers to stuff like sleep dart is so awesome i love sleep dart and you know the complaints about sleep dart is stupid they're so stupid and anyone complains comment about comment section's not gonna like that i don't care about the comments <laughs> anyone that complains about nate are stupid as well you can counter nate in so many ways you can counter sleep dart in so many ways and it takes brain cells to actually do it right and it's so fun when you outplay diana and so fun for diana when they outplay you and that is so awesome you don't have that anymore you just have to either you bait out the cooldown or you don't you can't counterplay the suzu you can't you know you can eat it or whatever you know like, it's just so annoying or the pylon the pylon that is just, or life weaver pool life weaver pool cannot be countered unless you bait it out thank you i mean so there's a couple strands there that i want to investigate the real quick though is that kark you are you or anyone else are, are you're not on the 6v6 train are you because samita will rejoice no, I actually do like 5v5, don't get me wrong. Okay. I'm a support player, so this is beneficial for me. I feel I like 5v5 too. as well. I do like 5v5. I just want to point out. Emmy and SK? Yeah, I like 5v5. Okay, SK? I feel like every support player does, probably. Yeah. 
Hello guys, SCP here and the Goop Up podcast is back and I'd like to take just 30 seconds of your time to talk to you about two quick things. Firstly, Patreon. If you enjoy the content, then please do consider supporting directly because Patreon takes only about 10% of the money you give where YouTube and Twitch take 40 and 50% respectively. So if you'd like to support the podcast, then that is the best way to do so. Secondly, if you're someone who enjoys video essays or detailed analysis of movies, TV, or anime, then please do check out my second channel, The Soak, where I'll be making videos about those kind of topics much more frequently and where a lot of my attention will go beyond just Overwatch. It would mean the absolute world to me if you guys would check it out. But that's it for now. Let's head back to the discussion. I'm torn on it. I've thought for so long about it and I can't decide which one. There's okay. so many uh. arguments for both. Yeah. Okay, because because obviously I don't I don't want to turn it into a successful discussion. We already had that debate. Nor do I think it's particularly productive. I don't see a realistic world in which we're going back to sixty six. I just don't yeah, think that's that gonna happen. happen. Yeah. So, but what but what can be illuminating illuminating is like learning the lessons of what's happened and, and adapting it to this game. Samido, while we mentioned him, did make a video recently on kind of how he felt supports have kind of ruined Overwatch, which is an appropriate discussion to have, I think, on the support debate as another counterpoint. One of the things he really spoke about, it's a very good video, even if you are a support player, I think it's worth a watch. You can check it out on his channel. One of the things he talks about is this sort of gradual progression, which Boger is alluding to here, of the initial launch of Overwatch supports. You know, Zenyatta, Mercy, Lucio, back when Symmetra, but let's forget about Symmetra being a support to start with. A lot of these guys, they kind of, well, firstly, they're single target healers, and they, the utility is not, again, kind of a lot of what Bogus spoke about, it's, it's kind of the utility is finite, it's counterplayable, it's, you can understand how it works. Over time, Brig is added, Moira is added, the, the way the healing is outputted becomes easier, so it's AoE healing, it's, it's, just push the button and it executes the entire healing, right? As opposed to Ana, where you have to hit the shot to heal. Because she has the higher healing output compared to the previous supports, but that comes at the cost of having to hit it. Same for her abilities. We eventually start transitioning to, well, you know, Brig, just everyone heals around her. Moira, everyone heals around her. Bap, everyone heals around him. Kiriko, the Suzu, you just push the thing and it does the thing, right? So it is not necessarily an execute mechanic. Do you feel like that has been a problem? Do you feel like that is why one of the people why people feel so frustrated with the support role? And I think another complaint often here, you know, even SK kind of alluded to, well, I can turn my brain off with some of these supports. And that's what a lot of people feel, I think. They feel like well, the reason they're so angry is that they feel like supports are too free. So do you think this transition is part of it? Like this this emphasis from the development side of supports that are executing things too easily. I want to take it to SK if you are feeling up to the voice of it, SK. Do you have any thoughts on this? Supports being easy to play. Or the, um, the later, the newer supports getting, you know, more free value as it were. I think for me, a lot of the reason that I find support like brainless and easier to play is just because the hitboxes are so big. Like Ilari is a great example. If I'm playing Ash and I'm just whiffing everything all day, like I literally can't hit anything, I go to play Iari and I'm hitting every shot just because the hitbox is like a lot bigger on her bullets and things like that. But I do think there is also like a lot of um, um, thought lost. Like when I play Kiri, I don't even really need to ult track anymore. <laughs> like, sure, I can. Like, Oh, they have Ilari ult, I'll save my cleanse or whatever. But most of the time, like, if I don't even realize that, I'll still have it for when they ult. So I guess that's like the only example I could really think of right now. So you so you do do you agree or disagree with the premise? Like do you do you think the the way they've designed the new supports is fine, or do you think there is a like a wider problem with the way these new supports, Iliari and Kiriko and, and Life Weaver are kind of the, 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 the way their kits and their save abilities operate? Oh, yeah. No, I, I don't like it. I Just, like, having to bait something out before you can press your button feels bad. And it, it's different when it's, like, other abilities, but if I'm playing against a Kiri and I have JQ ult and she knows I have JQ ult, she will not press cleanse until I ult. So it could be, like, an entire fight or two fights until eventually I'm just like, all right, screw it. I'll try and hit, like, four people so she can't cleanse everyone. And then she just cleanses everyone. It's like, oh, what the heck? And then Playing against Life Weaver pull is so frustrating. I hate that guy. And like, he can just counter so many ults with his abilities. Like, Life Weaver pedal stops grab, it stops sig ult. There's a whole bunch more. Yeah. 
Interesting. Car Q, I, do you have any sort of thoughts on this? Do you feel like... Because you said, well, outplaying has been a thing since Overwatch 1. Yeah, you, I think so. So you disagree um, with this premise? That it's unfun to play. I mean, at the same time, like, some supports also had to, like, sit and wait. So JQ has to wait for Kiriko to thing. Lucio used to have to wait for Sombra to EMP, and then I have to come out of hiding before I could drop the beat. True, true. You know, there's uh, every role... Like, it's it's... I don't know. For me, I just feel like nothing's new. Like, it's... It, like, obviously, it's a new game, but, like, this isn't an old concept. So, like, you know, maybe one's a bit more disproportionately tougher for one. But, like, you know, hiding a Zen to before you pop your trank for the EMP or, you know, I have to save. Like, as a queen, you don't alt until Kiriko cleanses. And then for me, I'm like, their tracer's lurking around. She's looking for a pulse bomb. I can't do it until she pulse bombs, too. You know what I mean? There's there's more things than one thing. to. Tr I still have to hold my stuff relative to the uh the compositions you know what i mean okay boger yes go ahead yeah, i want to interject is that sure. you're right you're completely yeah. right it always existed but emp is an ult and you counter an ult with it Suzu mm. is an ability that that is wow. annoying i don't mind you know having that game like back in the day where yeah. you you wait out the emp and then you beat or you know play around that but it's an ult for ult you know it's not a ability for an ultimate it is so infuriating to right. have to wait to use your ult for four fights like sk said just for the kiriko to use an ability and that's it the end mm. sorry i think some tanks also have the the ability to stop things as well with not an ultimate as well for example zarya bubbles they counter the diva bomb or they can they they stop they can stop like big impactful things as well, you know. Yeah, but I mean? you have one tank, right? But you can yeah. have a Kiriko Suzu and a Life Weaver yeah. Pool, for example, ah, right? Okay. You can have you can have two supports countering you while the tank mm. is only one and the Zarya needs to choose between bubbling herself or somebody else. And there's like a lot of gameplay around. You can also break the bubble, you can also bait out the bubbles. If you bait out the bubbles, Zarya is dead if she doesn't have bubbles, right? There's a lot of thinking behind it. Suzu, she doesn't have to use Suzu, right? Life Weaver. His entire purpose for the pool is to save it for that one moment, right? There's right. no other moment. He doesn't have to use it ever. True. Those are the strengths of those heroes, but then what's the downside? So you have to have, like, the, the design philosophy of, like, a balance between that. That's which is why I think it's annoying to play against Life Weaver, but he's balanced because he does everything else kind of shitty. Or, like, the damage portion. But you can pump you can pump your damage arbitrarily on, like, if they have a Roadhog, you can farm higher damage on the stat sheet. But, like, against high movement comps, then you're, like... You're strong on one end, which is to, like, you know, deny certain ultimates, but then you're weak on the other. And I don't think that's, like, a terrible design philosophy, in my personal opinion. Um, like, we're at a game... We're, like, it's an ever-evolving live service game. Like, how many different healing archetypes can you really have in, like, designs? It's, like, single target or AoE, and it's just, like, you know, when you have, like, hundreds of heroes, you're going to have some overlap on things that do very similar things. So, like, I don't know. I like the design of the new heroes, to be honest with you. Um, I think every single hero they've released so far has been a banger, including Sojourn, Junker Queen, the ones that came out with the game Kiriko. Those three were great. Ramatra has been great. Um, so I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Sorry. Okay. No, no, it's it's a fair yeah. point. And I think, again, to, I will have to try and do my best to present the arguments of the support defenders, which is that mm. what you're what you're saying is correct, Bogrin, that, well, there's the one tank, whereas there's the two supports who can stack these things on top of each other. But the supports would say, well, that's we have to do that as well because we, on our own, each support is potentially weak, right? Each support yeah. on its own potentially can just get completely rolled by the one tank. So we need to gang up on the one tank, otherwise they just win. So like that's the two is only yeah. evening that, it out. That's our role. Like that's we're a support. And now obviously some supports do a little too much on other categories, but like that is the purpose of it. But it's like also then the same thing with tanks. It's just like. You could sit there as Arissa and just like rotate all your cooldowns, you never die. You could sit there and just block as Ramatra forever and actually just like stall forever. I mean, the fun factor is a different thing, but like it can also be equally annoying from a supports perspective where it's like, I can't do anything to the enemy team, but then I uh, default to, you know, healing my team or whatever, which can be, you know, fun on its own. And that's actually another psychology thing where it's like sometimes, you know how you guys said like support's very chill, it's a more easier role, relaxing role? I can agree with because you can always feel like you're doing something. That's like a, where it's like, you know, even if if my back's against the wall, I can always like be healing my teammates because they're usually around me. But then when you're a DPS, you have to like find all these angles as tanks, you have to make sure where the hell is your team, find this cooldown, bait this cooldown. There is like 
parts of support that are like super super chill but i just think that's just the the way the role operates and like i don't think you'll ever be able to equally associate fun for each the fun factor for each role because they all just do different things and maybe like human tendency is to like enjoy uh, the chill role more and it's like frustrating well, to do the hard ones but some tank players love the the chaos and they're like yeah i love taking all the hits from my team you know what i mean but i think tanks been disreport like always been like a less popular kind of role in all kind of games or maybe i'm wrong on this i don't know but like whenever i like you know you like raid in world of warcraft or whatever it's like isn't it harder to no, find that's tanks correct. in general that is correct in, in most yeah. video games less people play tanks i think there's a really important insight in there though which i don't know if we've consciously talked about it is that the activity of the support is perhaps what makes it feel more like auto like you feel more autonomy Engaging, on support autonomous yes 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 because you feel like because because the difference is as you said with a tank or a dps you can't even always be doing damage right like certain tanks for example they're 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 nerfed by their range so if you're like ryan you know we've spoken about like reinhardt even winston like the sniper monkey while amusing when you get the sniper monkey is largely pointless like it's not actually gonna do anything in the mid in, in like the pre fight poke so it's like this you know think tanks like this are often left with nothing to do but stand there right but just be there so they don't have this constant thing they can be doing to make themselves feel like i'm actually contributing and even dps sometimes you know you you can't really always be doing damage because of the circumstances of where you are or perhaps again your range as a dps so maybe that's an insight emmy i want to take it to you because you haven't spoken in a while like how do you feel about what we've kind of spoken about here with the way the supports have evolved firstly if you have any things to add on the first thing we discussed about the the power creep for lack of a better term of the support heroes the new ones and also just this idea of like the dynamism of the support role um i kind of agree that like certain abilities that you get free value from that you don't have to like ult track like suzu because the cooldown's so short you're just gonna have it for almost everything that's always gonna be unfun to uh play against um but I think that there's also a lot of people that think supports should not be able to like do damage. Like they should only be able to support their team and enable their team. And that's never going to work in the Overwatch setting because you have to be able to change the outcome of a game yourself. So I, I don't know. I just think it's, <laughs> I'm kind of like in the middle of car queue and Boger and SK. Um, I just think that there should be some sort of fall off for like Kiriko. Like Kiriko can do everything. She can output healing, she can damage, and she can MO and cleanse. And I think that there should be some sort of fall off for characters like that. And like even Life Weaver, honestly, I don't agree with Karku on Life Weaver. I think Life Weaver is really, really hard to um counter because he has so much uh he has the movement, he has the platform, and he has pool. And they're all short cooldowns, minus pool, I guess. But uh, like the movement and the platform alone, like keep him from dying nine out of ten times. I just think there should be more fall off for characters that have, I guess, quote unquote, easy abilities. Right. Oh, so you mean you... counter counters to those characters? Like um, more, more no. Things to like... like deficiencies like things that they can't do. Like oh, Kiriko can do everything. So I think True. I don't know. Like she shouldn't be able to do everything. You know. I do think Kiriko is a lot more versatile than I think the versatility in play styles is also a big factor on the why supports feel really good as well or uh, certain supports. Um, I do think now that now that I give it more thought, there are like uh, some tanks that are stuck being very one dimensional because you're simply out of range. Like as Ryan yeah. or like even Azaria, like it's really hard to like do anything against like the flying heroes, for example. Um, that. But that said, I do think supports deserve like abilities that do those things because they're supports. Okay. So like that kind of pushes them into that role of support. But if you go that route, I feel like you kind of need to do that with every role, like make DPS more of a DPS role and tank more of a tank role. But I think that's just hard to do in Overwatch because like nobody, it's not going to feel good if you can't change the outcome of a game. So, like, if you reserve supports for only having specific abilities and they can't do anything else, you can't really change the outcome of a game because you're just enabling your team. You're not enabling yourself. Mm. I want to take it to Bogor SK if you guys have anything to chime in on this one. I think, personally, that I don't... I want to emphasize this. I 
don't really think that 90% of the supports are broken in the same way people say they are broken. You don't automatically win the game by picking Kirk or whatever, right? But I do believe that many games can be dictated by supports so easily. Um, I hate to bring up tank all the time, but it's the support debate, and it's about support, but... Um, if well, don't worry, we team... spent a lot of the tank debate talking yeah, about they go hand in hand. So, yeah, right? they, so, they go hand in hand. So my, yeah, yeah my, 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 my thought is that when you're playing support, you can easily take the game hostage by picking, you know, Life Weaver Lari on Circuit Royale. And if the enemy team is playing Bab Zen, you just lose the game, you <laughs> know, like 90% of the time, especially in high elos. Um, Supports can dictate whether or not the enemy team is going to get value from their ults in the first place, right? Like, if your team is playing, uh, you know, Life Weaver, Kiriko, Baptiste, whatever, 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 they can easily counter many, many ults. And I think that's the most annoying part. I, when I express my opinion about support, it's not whether or not support automatically wins every game. It's that support is just so annoying sometimes to play against, right? And as somebody that plays Life Weaver, I can tell you, it is so annoying for the enemy team to deal with me. I have done so many silly things with this character by just using my abilities uh, to their full potential. You know, you can block mail, you can cancel it basically with tree. You can do so many things with this. You can cancel Sigma ult with, with your platform by just standing on it. There's so many things. Like, I can't imagine the amount of pain and suffering people experience by playing against a Life Weaver who, uh, for, uh, when this character, three of his abilities are there to just absolutely fuck with you. It is so obnoxious, probably. But for me, it's fun. And, you know, like, the thing about support is it's really fun to play because you don't care what people do. Nobody can pick anything to counter me if I'm playing Life Weaver. Nobody can pick anything to counter me if I'm playing Kiriko, right? I can play my game. If we lose the game, go next, whatever. But, and every ability that I have is so annoying for the enemy team. And that is the problem that people have with support. I, I, I don't think support is all to win button. I don't think support is, you know, I don't think it's oh. black and white. I don't think it's black and white as people take it. You know, and they think it is, right? Like, if I play support and I play well, it doesn't mean I'm going to win the game automatically. Like, as many of you said, Playing tank, you can carry games as well. On a recent Zara, you can absolutely, but at the same time, it is just so annoying to deal with some support abilities. And Life Weaver, for example, I don't think he's an easy character per se because you know there aren't many Life Weaver players. It's hard to think about everything that's going to happen and how to counter everything. You still need to position yourself correctly. I don't think it's super free and easy to do all of that. But when you execute it really well. Everyone on the enemy team is just annoyed and they're not having fun at all. And that is my problem with many support characters. It is just so obnoxious to play against sometimes. It, be, it on, be it you're playing DPS or tank or even support, the enemy support can just crush all fun you have with the game. There is no greater pain I experience than me playing tank and the enemy team going Babzen. I think there's nothing greater than that. <laughs> you know, now with Bastion buffs, and Bastion yeah. being meta, the same applies with DPS. But before Bastion buffs, Bob Zen, I, I just know I won't be playing the game. I just know I'm AFK on card, and that's it. It's over. <laughs> Anyways. No, it's a fair so, point that you bring up. Uh, so, sorry, Karki, yeah. Karki, did you have something to say? So, it's it more about, so just like the, the, it's more of a fun factor and annoyance to play against them rather than like them being like a free win button. I just want to make well, that important distinction because a lot of people, I think I, with what Boger said, I really want to emphasize what he said there. I like the way he phrased that. Where the, there's, there, there is a misconception, not everyone believes in this, but there's a lot of sentiment saying like supports are a free, like free win because they're OP, but that's not actually the case. It's just the disproportionate amount of fun versus annoyance. And that's a well, separate argument than the win thing. No, 100%. You're correct to point. I mean, I think that okay. argument is stupid in, in in of itself because it's like, well, both yeah. teams have supports. So, like, it, it, yeah. can't, it can't possibly be an auto-win button because they also have the potential auto-win button. So, it, it cannot be as simple as that. I wanna, and that's why I, I just want to win rate is, too. It's like so yeah. thing. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. I just want to add one final thing why I really like, you know, uh, Anna, for example, why I really like Lucia, for example, is because you can counterplay them. Like, I can play around the Lucia. I can counterplay on Anna. I, I need to think about it. People don't like to think. They just want to play the game and win. But I can, by thinking, 
counterplay Lucio and Anna. I can do that, and that's but fun. You're, you're saying that was specifically the character that you want to play. I guess technically you can counterplay other supports with other tanks. But it's just that you don't want to. You you're saying you don't want to have to counter swap to counter those characters, no, right? I I I what I'm saying is that uh, I really like the design of Lucio and Anna. That's what I'm trying to say. A lot of tank players they complain about the fact that they don't want to counter swap to counter characters or you know play around characters, and I get the annoyance, but you know it's always been like that. What what can you do? Like if you don't want counter swap, like SK said. It, uh, unlucky for you like what it's always been like that uh, if i play winston into a bad comp for winston and i keep losing it's on me i i know it's on me it's annoying but i can swap whatever mm -hmm. but my point is i really like Anna design i really like lucid design because when i'm playing against them and when i'm playing them as well there's a lot of thinking involved there's a lot of layers like an onion right shrek reference but <laughs> there's a lot of layers to it there's a layer upon layer upon layer when you're playing against Life Fever, there is no layers. It's either he gets pulled and, you, and he doesn't die, or he doesn't get pulled and he dies. That's it. There's no layers. There's no fun factor. And that inherently makes it boring for everyone except the Life Fever player. Yeah, sorry. I misunderstood you. I thought you were saying... No problem. Like, oh, I, I, I forgive I... you, Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were saying you just want to be able to like counter any character with a specific tank and not no, have to I think, swap around. I think what Boger's alluding to is a very good way of putting it and it's so, something again we see people say uh, there's there's a couple things i want to bring about but i just want to let's go on this point for now which is i think what why people often look at anna as this goal set which is i know it annoys people because i know there's plenty of people who hate anna too right there's plenty of people who feel like sleep and and, and antinate are, are too powerful i think the reason why a lot of people boger and myself and other people look at Anna as kind of like the gold standard of, of a support design is because every decision comes with it a cost which is and I I want to just dwell on this point and compare to Kiriko for for an example. So with Ana, if I, both abilities can be used aggressively or defensively, and each comes with a reward and a and a risk. So should I try and sleep someone aggressively, as in like let's sleep someone over there, to try and get a pick? Well, that means that now that I don't have the sleep. Should someone go on top of me, and that I don't have a disable, mm -hmm. should I need to protect myself? And of course, my character has no mobility. So should I be gotten upon? I I'm going to die probably. The nade is equally. I can try and use it as a purple to try and get someone dead over there, or I can use it to heal myself. But even the heal on yourself is a temporary measure, right? It's like, it's a, it's a finite amount of extra healing. After that, that's it. That's no more. Like, so if I have 200 HP, I go down to 100. I nade myself. I think now they nerfed it. You go down to like 150. It used to be go back to 100, 200, right? But even then, that's it's buying me an extra one second, two seconds. And on top of that, these abilities have to be aimed and positioned like in a certain like a nade across the map has to be landed, sleep across the map has to be landed, sleep on someone close to you has to be landed. Compare that to Kiriko, and I, I've seen this playstyle now a lot. I, I think many unranked GMs have, have brought this bad habit now where Kiriko players, for example, they just walk straight into the back line. You just hear the like sound of kunai flying across your ear. They two tap. Right, so like any character basically that's not a tank is going to get two tapped by the Kiriko headshots. Should you try and punish her? Suzu. Okay, well, I've made the Suzu out. Now I can kill steps away across the map through a wall to her teammates. Every every moment that you had to try and counterplay it is now gone. This character gets away scot-free. At worst, she got nothing. At best, she killed like two to three people. So there's like the, the, the difference there is that there's no risk. There's no potential loss to the play style of your hero. I think that is what frustrates because the the there's no there's no downside to doing that. There's very much no downside. So I think that's what perhaps the frustration of many players is and and I'm curious again SK to get your opinion on this cuz cuz what Boger spoke about is right in that it feels great on your POV, right? When you're playing Life Fever, when you're playing Kiriko or whatever, it feels great to have so much impact in your hands and so much power in your hands to control the game. But how do we, how do we a make that something that everybody can feel, or is that impossible? Like, is it impossible that every role can feel that level of control and autonomy, or does it have to be that it comes at the cost of others? Oh shoot, this is hard. I have a terrible headache. I'm sorry. Wait, okay. I have one thing I wanted to say to Go Boger earlier, is that. I think you can get counterpicked on support and have to swap, but it's not so much as like counterpick, I suppose, isn't the right word for it. There's just like 
a lot of situations where if you swapped, you would be getting more value. I think it's dependent, sorry for cutting, uh, but I think it's dependent map. For example, if you play Havana Circuit around Junkertown, you know, playing characters like Bap and Zen is inherently better than playing characters like, I don't know, Lucio. Lucio sucks in this map most of the time. And I think... I think it applies for every hero most of the time. There's, I think it's okay as well. Like having characters that are good on certain maps and characters that are bad on others, that's okay. And what I, I want to say is that when you're playing tank, for example, people can pick one hero and counter you. But when you're playing support, there's no one hero that will counter you most of the time. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what I was they need say. to change the entire comp or play on a certain map to counter you. And I think that's really annoying because it happens a lot more... Uh, uh, a lot less often in rank than it happened than them just changing to Bastion and countering you. Sorry. I don't think one hero can counter you on tank either, though. I think the biggest problem with tank is that you are only one tank, so the entire team swaps to counter you, and then you you're screwed. But like, I agree. When they start yeah. stacking, and once they counter the one tank, you just lose the game and you go FK. That's annoying. It doesn't happen yeah. in support because if you counter the just, one support, let, well, there's a second one. I just want to let SK get her thought out while she can. Go ahead, SK. Oh. <laughs> okay. You good? I'm sorry. I have a terrible headache, and I'm no. That's totally okay. Thinking. That's totally okay. You know, you take your time, SK. This is what we'll do. Just take your time. If you have anything to say, just like you know, light up or drop a message in the Discord, and just at any point, oh if you're like, I have something I want to say, just just chime in because I want to be able to to get your input. I really value it, but I don't also want to force you like this to kind of put you on the spot. And you're like, oh shit, my throat's really killing me right now, so I actually don't want to speak. So is that no, okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm having a fever as well. I might need to lie down soon. I don't know, okay. but this works. This I'll stay as okay. long as I can. Go. Okay. Now, totally. Where if you have to go, go. Totally okay. Um, all right, so we've kind of talked about that element a lot. There's one more thing that I wanted to bring up in the general discussion of support before we talk to each character. It was uh, actually Emma Elias. I want to take it to you because, you know, I saw on Twitter there was like a clip. I won't name any names, but there's like a clip of, of like a player who was playing tank and was trying, <laughs> to fight, was trying to fight two support players and was kind of complaining. I mean, I got plenty of, of, of heat as well when I was talking about how unfun tank is to, when you get like yeah, chain yeah. CC. When you get chain CC'd and stuff, but you in particular reacted to this clip of like someone trying to one v two supports basically, and then was was unhappy that <laughs> they kind of survived I, it. I think in that specific clip, it was just a terrible example. Like I don't necessarily entirely disagree on what they were saying, but they were trying to dive on a brig, I think, as Doomfist, and I'm like. In what world do you think you should be able to 2v1 those two heroes on Doom, like on Doomfist? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, at, to some degree, you have to admit that it's not a support issue in that scenario. Skill issue. Oh, literally. <laughs> like, wait, like that's that just a dumb wait, wait, SK, SK has something to say. I will I give her priority over everyone. So, he did pop his ult, and during the entire time, the person he was shooting at never went below half HP. So I think, like, not so much as being able to kill them, just the fact that he used his ult all, and hit all of his abilities and all of his shots, and the Ana never went below half HP is pretty insane to me. Like, Was he I dying? can agree that maybe he... Sh- Sorry, Sorry, continue. But, no, go, go ahead. Like, I can agree that maybe he, sh- like, he definitely shouldn't be able to 1v2 supports. Like, support should be able to stay alive. But if you are Doomfist, you hit all of your abilities and your ultimate, and no one goes below half HP, I do think that is a little bit ridiculous. Was he diving the Ana originally? I thought he dove the Brig originally. Yeah, well, yeah, remember. he did hit Brig with, like, he hit the Brig with his punch and, like, the the Brig with his ult, I think. But she also didn't go below half HP. And then, I don't know. It was just, like, he was hitting everything. But none of them went below half. It was crazy. Yeah, I don't, re- I don't remember the full clip, but... I don't I actually just... know what clip this is. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, like, bring the clip. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah, like, play yeah. the clip no, because no, I don't want, yeah. I don't want to... I don't, I, there's yeah, another, don't there's another... People. There's another also, there's another, like, a toxic trait, I think, which is that when, when someone shares a clip expressing their frustration, we kind of tend to VOD review them. It's like, yeah, oh, well, yeah, oh, well you could, you should have used true. this, you should have played absolutely fucking perfectly. And it's like, well, uh, do you play perfectly? Nobody, nobody in this clip played perfectly, right? We're all just... Okay, to be fair. And with your clip, I actually did not feel the same way, just FYI. Like, mm-hmm. I know that there were, like, misplays or whatever, but I, I do agree with your clip because you were getting, like, chain CC'd. Booger? 
be fair, Under Brick is the most annoying support duo ever in existence. It's so annoying to play against that. <laughs> and like it is, you you have to play perfectly to get Vali. Even if you play perfectly, you can't get Vali. It's just uh, it's just obnoxious, especially. <laughs> If you don't play so what a character, is, that, what is the thing yeah. here? Then we, I just want, I just want to, because I, I know people will be listening to this podcast who are who are like dedicated support mains who are gonna be just annoyed that we keep bringing up these points about this is annoying, that is annoying, you guys, blah blah blah. What is? How can we? Fe- how can we kind of frame this in a constructive way? What is it about this situation that we can kind of potentially alleviate or 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 illuminate in a way that makes people feel worse or, or less less wor- less bad about these kind of situations? Of like, well, what is it about Anna Brig? Why, why is it that when they exist, you're not gonna have fun? Like, what, what can we, what, how can we frame this constructively? SK, I, this is like a whole huge thing that goes like both ways, because supports need a way to survive. Like, supports should be able to live in this situation, um, but I think it should take like skill shots and I don't know, like, like, oh, this was a great play that I made in order to stay alive, in the. And the clip we're speaking about, it was just Brig like hitting E on her Ana three times and Ana threw a nade at her feet, and that's how they survived. Like Ana didn't hit her sleep dart, Ana didn't anti the doom or whatever. She just threw a nade at her feet and Brig triple repair packed her. But also, Ana Brig is like the only support comp that can survive against a coordinated dive. So there's an argument to be made that that does need to exist because how can supports have fun if that's the only team? That's the only support comp that can survive. But that's also an Overwatch League. I don't know if it applies so much at ranked. Um, but there's like this whole thing like, should supports be able to survive through this? I think they should. If supports can't survive, then they can't have fun or play the game at all. But like, yeah. Right. It's just, I mean, it's there just... Is... go ahead, Elmi. Sorry. Ahead. I mean, there is also like a drawback to that too. Like, the Doom has the attention of both supports in the back line currently True. not doing anything yeah, else. Yeah, then for the, rest the other support, the other tank is just left out to dry. So it's just like they got no resources. Yeah. If Anna Brig is dumping all the resources for themselves, then, you know. So, so it's like you are game, getting out of the game. Is arguably Doom's doing his job. He's 1v2ing, he's taking the attention to two <laughs> supports. I think the frustration of tank players comes when you do that and you still lose. <laughs> That's the problem. Is like you're you're like doing this whole I'm taking resources away and then you turn around and like well a soldier and killed four people while I was drawing resources away. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry, I did. Yeah. I I, I want to defend really supports. Like, oh, I want to be devils. That. That, like, I <laughs> want to push the support agenda, but uh, uh, sometimes it spills out. I apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, SK. You were going to say something. Sorry, that like that was such a good point that changed my mind on the whole thing. Like the at that point it's just the tank's fault for like like you need to be able to realize when you made a good play and your team just let you down. Like that is not a problem with supports there. That was just like good job. You distracted them. They had no heals. Your team just sucks. Like, GG, you made the right play. <laughs> it's not a problem of balance. It happens. Right. And th- that could be something from the game design perspective to kind of help a player understand that better, perhaps, or feel better mm. fee- feedback for a situation like that. Because I, th- I think it's a, f- it's a feeling thing. It's not necessarily a clear cut balance thing in that sense. It's, it's, a, it's the, the satisfaction that you get doing that versus the satisfaction you get killing a guy or healing a player is better. You know, those are better. Yeah. So maybe I'm there's sorry, something I to think to about. Down. Go ahead. I have, I have a terrible headache. I must go. Okay, that's totally fine, SK. Thank you for the time you gave us. Thank you for your input. Hope you feel better. It's totally okay. Don't worry about it. Do not worry about it. Feel better, SK. Guys, while the while the overlay, f- wait, actually, this was working out. Boom! I actually have a look. Bulger's just the Pachimon. I have I have a ready ready made switching, so we'll just we'll just sort that out with the name tags. Can I can I talk about this? The Brigand. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I want to say that I agree. I think. First, this issue only arises in high elo. It has never happened in low elo because even if they play on a brick, they don't know what they're doing. And rarely it happens that they play on a brick in lower elos. It only mostly happens in high elos. And second of all, I think the frustrations from tank players comes down to the fact that they don't understand the game. Like, it is annoying, as I said, to play against on a brick, but it's annoying because I have a lot of bloodlust and I want to just you know, dive the supports, and I want them to disappear, right? But it right. doesn't happen against Ana Brig. You can't do that. What you do is, you dive them, you bait their cooldowns, and then you leave, right? And during that time, you can take space, your team can get kills, your team doesn't, uh, your team has heals while their team doesn't have heals, and it's just a different game. And people think that 
it's just I'm gonna die, they're gonna die, and I, I win the game. That's it. It's not how it happens. It's not how it works. Yeah, it is annoying. I just dropped it out as a comment. It is really frustrating. But if I had to choose a comp to play against, I would choose to play against Anna Bray because you know there is you know some thought behind it at the end of the day. Like I, it's I didn't mean to say that it's annoying in the sense that it's absolutely busted and broken. It's just a different game that you have to play, and yeah. people can complain about it. But those people that complain about it, about Anna Brick specifically, I, I think they're just bad at the game, honestly. I'll be honest. Just get, get I think better. that goes back to like each role having like what their role is. So like Tank, right. your role is to make space and support. Your well, role is it is <laughs> to make space and support roles. Obviously, to, it's more know. than that. Yeah, yeah of I, course, to do simplify. utility and stuff. But uh, the game is about fun. And if you're just a support who's doing utility all the time, like playing a MOBA, that is so boring to play support in MOBAs. I'm sorry for saying it. It's boring. I, Overwatch supports are so much more fun because you actually do stuff and you play the game and you can carry the game. And with tank, it's just annoying to be just the guy that gets shot all the time, even though in a lot of games it happens that you are the guy that's being shot at. That's the role of, of tank, right? And people expect things like, I'm going to go and carry the game. It doesn't happen, they get annoyed. But you can't carry the game every time. Sometimes it just won't happen. And I think uh, this leads well as well to, to the final point about the bigger picture support thing. It leads well into the the why we got here, which is that Briggs introduction, let's look at that as like kind of like the the liminal moment, the moment when it all changed. It was because supports were just falling over, right? To dive in particular. It's like it a lot of the frustration, I suppose, support players will say, well, what you're wanting is just us to fall over. You want us to just like fall over and die. And we're surviving, and that, that's frustrating for you, but that means we're not just deleted out the game. And that's kind of how it was back when Brig was introduced, because dive heroes were just destroying backlines, and it became a game about, like, well, whose backline survived longer? Not who's survived and who's, who's died. It was just like, who survived for an extra five seconds to get a little bit more value out before they died? So I guess for support players, it's it's like, well, we're, we're finally at a stage where we can actually live through things. Now let's Now let's work around that, but let's keep that facet of the support role in. We want to be able to like actually play the game and not fall over. Karku? Yeah. Any oh, thoughts? I have nothing to add to that one. Nothing to add to uh, that one? No, like I think you're right with the whole like, you know, whoever survives longer kind of thing. But I had a thought earlier, but I kind of lost my train of thought, which is, I didn't want Damn. to interrupt for like Damn. the sixth time. So my bad. No, no, go ahead. Feel free. We, you know, we want the free for all. Sometimes, if you got thoughts, throw them in. Just interject. I don't mind. Um, okay. okay. So, is there anything else anyone wants to bring up on the bigger picture before we start talking about each of the individual supports? No. I think all right. We kind of identified the biggest mm -hmm. pictures. Usually, like certain abilities are unfun to play against, mm -hmm. just because that's how they are. Mm -hmm. And 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 oh, I had oh the thought was oh okay I remember it was it was mostly just like. A lot of complaints are so like mis misplaced or misguided when it's just simply just you know. I was okay. My my brain was thinking like a a mercy pocket kind of uh, debate that I've kind of seen, but this is a. Uh, I mean, it's sort of related but unrelated. But um, it's uh the whole like you know I'm so and so and I'm challenging this this as a DPS player and I'm challenging this like mercy pocketed Ash and I'm an Ash and I can't win if I don't have my own mercy pocket. And I'm like, well, you're not supposed to, you don't take the one V two. Like in, in any world taking a one V two is just like already at a disadvantage. It, it was related to one of the doom fist thing where like, were you taking on to when you're challenging two people? It's like, in what world is that ever like, uh, the smartest thing to do? Everyone just feels like they should be able to kill everything. And that's like their, their, their bubble they live in. And if they, they can't, kill two people without dying it's simply frustrating they have to tweet something angry about it and i've always just found that silly which is why like i don't tweet that often because like i don't know I don't, it's not much to complain about like if i took a 1v2 i already know i'm going in a disadvantage maybe there's times i did win and then but then most of the time it's not going to go in your favor you know what i mean um but anyways that was like something no I that's totally to fair earlier, i think i think you know what in that note let's discuss mercy first because oh, okay. we kind of already, okay. already talked about it. I'm just going to take it in random order, however I feel like it. Um, and I think this is a this is a discussion that comes up often. Um, we've lost SK, and she always has some interesting thoughts on, on the whole Mercy situation. But to summarize, I guess, the, the, the complaints have not ceased 
on what it's like when Mercy is being pocketed. Boger will understand me a little bit because he also plays in EU, so he knows the the, the dread of the Mercy Farah, Mercy Echo, the flyer domination that exists on EU ladder. This issue hasn't gone away, but how do you guys feel? Do you guys feel like Mercy is fine? Do you think like there's no need to complain? I'm going to take it to... Uh, let's go to Emmy first. So Kark, you had to say, then Emmy, then I'm going to let Boger speak on EU experience. Oh, man. <laughs> uh... uh... I think Mercy probably needs something else. I just think damage boost is always going to be unfun to play against because it is true that you have to mirror the damage boost a lot of times in order to counter it. Like if they have far Mercy, you need a Mercy a lot of times. I mean, sometimes you can counter it with like Zen, but in lower ranks, 9 out of 10 times you need the Mercy. Um, Yeah, but I also don't think like Mercy is... I think Mercy can die. How do I want to word this? I I don't think Mercy is OP, I should just say. I I just think damage boost and and um res will always feel bad to play against. So is this another case of like it's not overpowered, it's potentially annoying, as we said earlier with some of the support yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, and I also think like as long as one shots exist, this is my hot take, I guess. I think Mercy Res should exist because if I can get shot from across the map and die, I feel like I should be able to also get rezzed. Okay, that's fair. That's totally I agree fair. With that. Okay. Uh Boger, you give your thoughts and then we'll get to Kark you again. Mercy. I don't think Mercy is broken by any sense. I, it appalls me. It's so confusing when people complain that Mercy is broken. What, in what world is Mercy broken? I know people are going to be like, oh, you're being held hostage by the Mercy Mafia, but how, <laughs> is, how is she broken? Like, it's it's so annoying to play against Mercy Farah. It's so annoying to play against a pocketed DPS. But, you know, it's just how the game works. Like, what are you going to do? Just delete Mercy from the game? Like, what are you... It's just the character, right? It, again, we go back to the, you know, the thought process of it's annoying to play against because I will kill somebody and I, maybe that needs changing in a way, but you can res from behind the wall. You can res while falling down. You can res in so many weird situations. And all of Mercy players are going to be like, oh, you can just counter the res. And you can't. You can't, you can't always counter the res. It, most of the time, when a good Mercy is playing, it's really hard to do something about that res. But it's not broken. I've never felt like they won the game because they had the Mercy. It never happened. It never in my mind yeah, have I thought... Yeah, if anything, the, the person would be like, can yeah, you, yeah, do you play anything else exactly. but Mercy? Like, the team that has the Mercy will complain about the I, Mercy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's way more situations where I feel like the enemy team lost or my team lost because we had a Mercy than they than us or them winning because there was a mercy in the first place. So I think people kind of frustrated with the game and with their own mistakes and just blame mercy all the time. But you're not losing the game because of mercy. You're just losing the game because you misplayed and because you know you you might think it's mercy's fault because for example it, there's a lot of annoying factors behind mercy like her res again and her damage boost and her valk you can't kill her right but you can punish mercy pretty easily to be honest especially if you play a dive character or you just hit your shots with dps and you know she's flying all over the map but like it's just the character it might be annoying to you but for many people, it's really fun to play. For the people that are getting pocketed, it's really fun to play. Uh, for the Mercy players, there's a huge Mercy community. It's really fun to play. It's just a weird spot where the character is. And, you know, maybe she needs some changes here and there for it to be less annoying. But if you change her, you know, core kit, she won't be Mercy anymore. So just leave her be, in my opinion. I don't think she's broken. Uh, what I do find annoying is far Mercy, far uh, Echo Mercy, you know, all of that stuff. I can't really do much about it if I'm playing tank or support a lot of the times. It's really complicated, but I don't think it's Mercy's fault. I, I, I don't think it's Farah's fault necessarily. It's just when you combine them, it just becomes really annoying to deal with, especially if it's a good player. But like, I don't know what to do about that. I think it's really complicated. I don't think you can pinpoint all of the blame on Mercy. Uh, but I don't know. Mercy is just chilling, bro. I, Mercy is just vibing. I don't know what to say. Like, I, I don't think it's broken. Mercy just vibing. Kark, you just, just vibe in your mind? Yeah, I think she's just vibing. Um, I don't know. I don't play Mercy a lot, but I play other supports. I can see why tanks would be frustrated playing against the flying archetypes. There's only like three, right? Like Echo, Farah, Mercy. But like... Supports do have tools to deal with it. Alari, BAP, I could pressure. Ana, I could pressure. DPS have options, but definitely tanks are on the short end of the stick against that specific archetype. Like, there's actually 
I mean, maybe Diva, you fly and like eat some stuff and be annoying, but you're not going to go up and like completely 100 to zero at any of the flyers if they're playing high enough in the air. You're not going to be able to boost close enough. And if you're like, you know, isolate in the air, that's not the smart way to play. But I don't know. I think Mercy, if we're starting with Mercy, I think she's chilling. Um, again, this is the whole debate of whether it's fun ver and annoying versus like actually like competitive viability and brokenness. I don't think she's broken anymore. Like she's. Yeah, and he, hard to change the identity, but I don't know. This is like a, I keep going back to this is like a live service game with so many different variabilities. Like, there's no matter what game you play, like you're gonna have certain archetypes and and styles that are just gonna be unfun for some, but very fun for others. So, in what world is everything supposed to be fun for everybody? It's impossible to please everybody. So, I'm in the fence. I'm I think with Mercy, it's okay. The damage boost is another thing which we can maybe move on to zen right after sorry to kind of like dictate the no, of it, but the whole damage boost idea is um annoying because of the, the 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 break points and everything but like i mean it's been tuned down quite a bit now 25 percent instead of 30 is it's okay um and uh you know, if you are challenging the 1v2 damage boosted Ash or damage boosted Flyer, like you have to consider that. Like, this is another one of the 1,000 factors and variables you have to learn to play around in a dynamic, fast, tactical shooter. If you have no tactical brain, stop playing a tactical shooter. Goddamn. That might be the spiciest thing Karku's ever yeah. said in his life. If he had thrown a curse in, I would have given that award, but then that's a yeah. rare Karku moment. Um, so, so the final thought on that then is that. Is there anything, I, I completely agree with what you said, that there is no way to create a situation where no one is not annoyed by something. Someone, like, no matter what composition of five heroes the enemy team is running, someone is pissed off about something. Yeah, especially because there's some guy who always comes in with the most hardest takes. I, my chat has an infamous meme about when I was playing Winston one time, and this guy just, like, counter swaps to Reaper, and I was like, oh, he's going to chase me around a Reaper the whole game. And someone in the chat is like, how are you going to complain about Reaper when you play Winston, bro? And I was like, what? And it's just like, so, so some guy will be mad about something, right? Like some people are upset about Winston Ryan or whatever. And ultimately any meta going on too long will annoy people. But is there any way that we can make it less annoying? Like we, some of these elements, is there any way to make the damage boost or the res feel more dynamic in any way that could alleviate some of the frustration? Emmy, you kind of seem like you had something to say. I don't know. I, th I think Mercy is disproportionately targeted for the whole support thing. I think it has to do with the people that play her and uh, the fact that she doesn't have to necessarily aim unless you go DPS Mercy. Um, and I think it's okay that there are characters that play that way, truthfully. It's a dynamic game. I think you should be able to have characters like that. Yeah. The downfall would be that you can get countered by hitscan. People and most can't aim. Sorry, I sorry, didn't mean to keep. No, you're good. You're good. I wasn't good. sure you, your sentence was over. Yeah. Right. Um, I think in most games have this stuff as well. So I, I you know, I I've been playing a bit of Dota. There's Io who kind of is a similar like I pocket this guy. And obviously I've been playing. I started playing League yesterday. I'm doing seven days of League, League of Legends, and I played yesterday. And I was first introduced to this character called Yumi, which I had no idea existed until now. Mm -hmm. And then I was just playing, and I was like, "What is this cat?" And then suddenly the cat merged with another person, and I was like, "Wait, <laughs> guys, so, chilling." So I was like, "The cat is just inside that person. Can I shoot the cat?" And my chat was like, "No, you cannot shoot the cat at all. You have to kill the person before you can kill the cat." And I was like, "This is like steroids, Mercy. People complain about Mercy, but like this guy just fucking AFKs inside <laughs> the other person, and that's it." So it's like, there's worse fates than perhaps what is happening in yeah. Mercy. So, um, Boger, I want to say that. I've played League a lot. I played Dota a lot. I played Overwatch a lot, obviously. Well, and hot. You, huh? Yeah, I've played Hots. I've played Hots yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, I have. I, I used to be an avid gamer before my Overwatch phase. But yeah. the, the thing is, like, I don't see why people are so upset about having characters that are, like, inherently less mechanically. Uh, you know, you don't need to use that many mechanics. Like, a good Mercy player, you can see the difference between a bad and a good Mercy player. There is sure. differences, right? It's a lot less common to see it between a bad and a good Mora. I'm sorry, Mora players, but Mora is Real. a little bit silly, right? But with Mercy, there is a lot you can do to maximize your value. A lot of people that complain that Mercy is easy, I bet you, especially the streamers and pro players, or there aren't that, that many pro players because they never see Mercy, but the streamers especially complain about Mercy being broken. I 
I I really want them to do a Mercy and Rank to Jam. Because everyone keeps saying Mercy is just free elo. It is not. It's so mind-numbing to play. Remember Life Weaver on release? You couldn't do much. With Mercy, you can get some value. But at the end of the day, you're a hostage to your teammates. And whenever the game is going good for the enemy team, you always complain about Mercy. Because the game is going good. But you never complain for the 50% or 90% of the games that are going bad when there is a Mercy on the enemy team. Of course not, because you just remember the bad times. I'm not trying to defend the Mercy Mafia or whatever. There's certainly really annoying factors, especially with damage boost. I always hated damage boost because like Karku said, it just breaks, you know, these points. Like people start one-shotting when they shouldn't be one-shotting. It's so annoying to play against a, uh, against a damage boosted soldier. It's so obnoxious, right? But if you nerf Mercy, Mercy is going to be absolutely horrible. And if you nerf Soldier, it's going to be absolutely horrible. Every game has something annoying to deal with. And like you said, for example, Yumi is so much more annoying than Mercy. It is so much more annoying. But it's just a core part of the game. You can't remove it. You can't do much about it. It's just how the game is. There's a big fan base behind Yumi. There's a big fan base behind Mercy. It's just something you have to deal with. There is no perfect world for you. For every perfect world that people imagine for the game there's millions of people that are going to be dissatisfied with it people want to remove every unskilled hero what is an unskilled hero for you reinhardt might be unskilled like consultative so but why that's stupid that opinion is stupid right so it is all a matter of perspective and if i have to get annoyed by mercy some games and have millions of people be happy about it i don't care just leave mercy as is like i am especially Confused by tank players that are annoyed by Mercy that don't have a Mercy far, for example. Like, it's just a Mercy in a random comp. Why are you complaining about Mercy? You go Ball, you go Diva, you go Winston, you just kill her every fight. It's so easy to do. Now, whenever there's a far Mercy or whatever, it's different, right? But if it's just a Mercy, it's just whatever. It's, anyways, rant yeah. over. No, no, this this is a, a very fair and based rant. And I think, obviously, the only thing that people would be like, I can hear in my voice the hero bans, which would be the best solution to when you have a frustrating hero you don't want in your game. Well, occasionally ban them, but this is also a good plug for Boger's upcoming unranked to GM1 Mercy. So if you are curious, say, was... if you're curious, see this unbiased take from Boger about streamers should do it un uh, unranked to GM1 Mercy. Well, if you're curious, you can go watch him do it. Um, okay, so that's enough of that, I think. Um, let's move on then. Karki wanted Zenyatta, so we'll give the man what he requests. From one damage boost to the other, Zenyatta. Now, we haven't heard, I think, too much complaint recently about Zenyatta. Because it was mm -hmm. a while when he was dominating the conversation about his Discord orb and whatnot. But right now, it doesn't seem so much. Do you still find frustration with Zen, Karku? Or are you happy with how he is? I think he's good where he needs to be good. Like, you play him on the strong maps and the strong comps. Like, on Circuit Royale and, like, sometimes, like, Shambhali. Um... You play with sitcoms, but like that's that's the thing with like you know Zen can be very oppressive, but also like pretty meh, uh, just depending on the meta. And like you know, a lot of people used to complain uh, with Zen and the the damage, or sorry, the Discord orb, when like you know Ryan was sort of playable, or like certain there's certain tanks that are like you know they can't reach the Zen because he just plays so far back, and then they just get like perma discorded, and then you know you just kind of get owned. But he's kind of like. I don't know. I feel like he's a hero that has weaknesses for this, right? He's super vulnerable. Super, super vulnerable. That's why you only exclusively play him on the strong maps with, like, very no-flank, one-dimensional, long sight lines like Circuit because the Tracer can't find an angle to f f go all the way around you and get behind you. Like, that that map is designed for him because it's long, front-to-back comp... Uh, Front to back design. Any map that's more open, he's way more vulnerable for like six different angles and sombras to show up and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um yeah, I don't know. I think Zen is actually I take one of the weaker supports. And I say weak in quotations, relative to the strength of the other ones at this current state. Interesting. And you're you're fine with that as it is. I'm okay with that. I actually think heroes. In a perfect world, heroes and comps are played based on, for me, like, sort of the map design. Obviously, you know, I don't know how deep map design stuff goes, but, like, there's going to be angles and sight lines that are more beneficial for certain heroes than others, and I think building a comp around that is okay. Uh, I mean, I think Circuit Royale is the biggest culprit of this. I think it has been, like, unanimously, like, one-dimensional for the longest time. But I've, I have seen some people run some, like, 
weird stuff on it lately, so it's like not always the case, but um yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Emma Elias, how do you feel about Zenny Boy? Um, yeah, I mean before this season, I guess, Discord did feel really terrible, but I think it's I think it's just against tanks for the most part, and mm. it's so it might just be a tank issue. I mean, it can't just be a tank issue, I guess. But yeah, well, I, don't know. I, I do think if you're forcing like a certain tank against a hero that has to play very safe and far back, then like you know, it's True. not going to be fun for some tanks. And that means the issue is that he can also counter tanks. like Winston. So I don't know. I don't really know what the solution is because I think right now he feels fine. But that's yeah. also because we're in a Zarya, Rissa, Bastion meta. I think I that is one. I'm Boger's thoughts on for yeah. for tanks because he used to play all these tanks against Zens. But I still do. But the point yeah. is, I used to really hate playing uh, playing against Zen. I still do in some maps. It's just annoying, right? Like, but it's just map based at the end of the day. Uh, I feel like Zen's role in the game has been kind of replaced by Lari because she does a lot of damage and she's really mobile while doing it and she can also heal a lot and she can reach high grounds. Well, Zen is really slow, right? And I feel like there's not much point to play Zen on 90% of the maps that aren't, uh, you know, with long range. So I think there's like a few maps that are really good for Zen and then Lari just overshadows him on every other map. For example, Zen's really good on Circuit Royale, on Havana, and on, for example, uh, Junkertown, right? Uh, those maps are really good for Zen because nobody can reach him. You can't play dive into that because he can just play super far away and just discord and just shoot and there's no fall off and just keep shooting. And it's really broken, right? Meanwhile, Lari struggles there because she has fall off, right? She can't just one shot people across. I mean, she can't one shot in general, but she can't just you know, DPS them across the map while Zen can. And uh, I feel like Lari's release has really, and plus Zenyatta's nerves, have led to Zenyatta being a lot less annoying and kind of replaced by her at the end of the day because she's just way more mobile. The game is really mobile. Like, you need to reach high grounds, you need to move around fast or you just die, and you need to think fast. And Zen is kind of slow. And... uh Zenyatta is either really broken or just bad most of the time. And right now, I think he's mostly bad because you you can just dive him and kill him every fight unless it's on a map like Circuit Real or whatever I mentioned. And uh, why wouldn't you just play Lori at the end of the day? What is the point of playing anything? Uh, uh, why, what is the point of playing Zenyatta when you can just play Lori or Baptiste, right? Like, just play them instead. They, they just do Zen's job better. And um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think I think this also e emphasizes the difficulty of the way we often approach balance in the devs as well. Is that things change before the, the the balance changes, right? Like so, like we introduce a new hero every so often. Well, that automatically might affect the viability of the hero that people have been complaining about, and then we kind of end up double attacking a problem or double buffing a problem where. We nerf Zen and Iliari comes out, so nobody's playing Zen anyways, but he's also extra nerfed, so he's like even less reason to play Zen. Or, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, there's like a character that's weak, and we're like, let's buff this character, but simultaneously we also add something that we nerf something else that makes that character better already, and now that character's like ridiculous. So it is like, I think it probably just comes from infrequent balancing plus the long time it takes for some things to happen, like a rework, which. As we speak, there's a, a Sombra podcast taking place, which I, I encourage you guys to watch as well, uh, where we're learning about Sombra's rework with Fitzy and uh, Ruben and, and Alec Dawson, I believe, which is like another example of like, well, let's say they rework Sombra and she's very good now. And then let's say by the half season point, we try to nerf something. Well, they're reworking Hog also. So it turns out Hog is going to solve X issue but is now going to cause third issue that we didn't anticipate. We've now nerfed a guy who actually maybe is good against Hog but, so it's like all these problems that we create, unfortunately, I think, with the, the, the sort of default, the deferred balance cycle that we have. But I think to some extent it will be unavoidable if we're not able to, like, balance all the time. Um, so any any other thoughts on Zen? I just the thought I had about the way Zenyatta has manifested this season. Because we went from everybody complaining about Zenyatta to suddenly nobody complaining about Zenyatta. But any thoughts? You're kind of largely fine as he is now. You think he's 
doesn't need touching anyway. Uh, I think he's fine, but then they're gonna buff him because he his numbers are low and he's gonna be broken again. Like Zen <laughs> Zen is never balanced. That's the thing. Like Zen Zen, like Zen's whole core gameplay is that he deals a lot of damage. He's a glass cannon, and either he's really strong or he's just whatever, you know. And that's just Zenyatta. Like you either there have to change him, yeah. I was going to say, there was a time when people looked at Zen as a very balanced hero. In Overwatch 1, for example, right? We, I, I often remember people talking about, like, well, he's great because he's got a great advantage, but he's got this glass cannon. I think that's part, probably because we've introduced people like Iliari, like Kiriko, who take that job, but don't, or BAP, and, and then don't have, have the same... the options. Yes. They don't, they don't come as much risk. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you for your perspective on that one, guys. Okay. Well, let's move on then. Because another one that was mentioned was Moira. Uh, and Boger had a particularly interesting take about just the not being able to tell the difference between a good and a bad Moira. So maybe, Boger, you want to open this up. I, 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 when Moira was released, I was one-tricking Moira. And back then, we had an historic system. I picked 4580. Since then, Moira has largely been unchanged. I think there's been some minor changes, but it's just the same character. Moira is like... Moira is like this character you play when you start the game. And I'm sorry to all the Moira players, but like... If if somebody plays me Mora gameplay from a good Mora player, like without showing me their rank or name, and then Mora gameplay from a plat player, I will not see a difference. I I I swear, ninety percent of people won't see the difference. And Mora just exists. She does her thing. You know, I hate Mora, in the sense that I just despise her. Like it's just such a bad support. It's just so bad. Like either she goes around and feeds. Or she kills the entire backline because they're stupid. Or they're being silly, right? It's just... Like, her healing sucks. I'll be honest. It just sucks. Like, it's short range. It, 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 it You know, you have limited amount. And her damage sucks. If you're Unless you're sitting AFK and doing nothing, she won't kill you. Her orbs just get eaten or whatever. You know, you can just easily count. Like, 90% of the times, when there is a more on my team, especially in high, in high elo, I know I'm going to lose the game. Because the character just sucks. It just sucks as a, fundamentally. Her ult, what is the point of her ult? It just does damage. Her, you can just use any other, you just shoot them in the head, you know. Uh, her healing sucks, her orbs suck. She flies around the map, does her thing. It's just, pff, I don't know. I, I don't like Moira. Okay. I never so liked Moira. TLDR, Moira sucks. Are there any Moira defenders in the call? I, I disagree. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I don't agree first. with the healing. Yeah, yeah, you okay. go first. You go first. No, you go. No, you. You By all means, you. <laughs> no, you. No, you. Okay, okay, no, okay. you. Okay, okay, I'll go no. First. <laughs> okay, okay. I agree. I think Moira's skill floor is very low like the skill representation is like basically in like fade jumps and that's the only thing you can like mechanically prove that you've practiced but other than that it is very simple to just simply hold your spray the 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 suck is like a super forgiving hitbox and it, for orbs you just chuck them maybe there are some like ge geometrical calculations you make in your head for the way they bounce but in general if you're shooting it into the clump of enemies it'll disappear before it needs to bounce same with the healing orb everyone's kind of low you just shoot it near you and it just like everybody sort of gets all the heal before it runs out so all of moira's skill is tied down to the decision making and like i guess a little bit of your movement and strafing um so I think she is a disproportionate hero in terms of like you can do very little like skill wise well i mean obviously game sense and decision making is a skill in itself but like mechanically you can get a generate a lot of value for her very reliable value and i've always said if you're simply just want to climb like one rank as a support and you're stuck in like bronze or silver you can actually just play moira and just play it super safe don't even have to think about backline and flanking and punishing you can actually just do that Pop your coalescence literally when you have it. I actually think coalescence is one of the stronger support ultimates, actually. I know you say you can shoot in the head, but it's, like, super high tempo. It's, like, uh, and uh, you can you can fade in coalescence now, which removes a big weakness of stunning it out of it. So it's, like, guaranteed good value. Just aim it in the general direction of your team and the enemy, and they're forced to run or they face tank the whole thing, and it actually is pretty strong now, in my opinion. But that's besides the point. Now... You say you didn't like more because yeah, I think you actually explained it pretty well. You got forty-five eighty on her that easily. Uh, that's because you're a good player, Voger. You already have the game sense because you play all the roles. Um, but uh, but I think you also said like she's easy. But did you say you didn't like her? You think she's weak? If you have it on your team, you lose. I yeah, disagree. That, uh, I think in ranked, you, I actually prefer having a, a more on my team in a lot of cases because in solo queue in ranked. 
you know, even in like, I play bottom top 500. I'm not playing top 100 lobbies with like all Allen contender players all the time. But like the Moira is like a reliable person that I know. Like sometimes if I have an Ana on my team and I'm playing someone else, like I can't guarantee they're going to hit every shot in GM1. But if I have more, I'm like, okay, they're going to cover me and then I can go do some, some funky stuff on Kiriko or whatever and then come back. Um, but I think Moira is a very strong individual hero and they can pump the stat sheet. My only issue with Moira players is them flexing the scoreboard. I'm like, okay, half your healing is from yourself because you just self-healed, and then you have a lot of, like, chip poke damage. You're going to naturally pump it because you can't miss. So, like, don't get it twisted, Moira players. But I will defend <laughs> you and think that the hero is... I would say she's pretty good in, in, in ranked play when the coordination's not, like, you know, contenders' lobbies, contender owl lobbies. Emmy? Anyways, go ahead. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with Q. Well, again, I'm kind of in the middle, but, uh, yeah, her heal- I don't agree with the healing output. I think her healing output is actually pretty strong. I do agree that it's too short, and I think it doesn't work in uh, some instances with the way Overwatch 2 plays. Um, but she does have massive amounts of healing if you're playing a, a comp that is good for it. Um, and I am the same way. I tell lower-ranked players to just play Moira if they want to rank up. <laughs> And you kind of are, are you largely fine with her state as she is? Um, no, I actually think Moira needs like utility. I think that she uh, literally her only benefit is her numbers that she can do on healing. And um, I think she needs something else. I liked the necrotic orb personally, but well, they've I wish tried played with it. You think they could, they could, because a lot of people were annoyed that, like, well, the, the problem with the necrotic orb, for example, specifically, is that it's too situational. Like, it sometimes is really good, but then the rest of the entire time you're doing nothing is more out. But you think they could have worked something out? Um, Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like they could have played with it more. It was like, they put it in the game, and then some people were like, ah, oh, this feels terrible because I got nobody with my blade. And then they just, like, took it out immediately. I think they could have, I don't know, workshopped it a little more. They have tried with Mora, to be fair. I think over the years, that I will say to the developers, I'm not usually... I, I feel maybe sometimes I, they think I'm a bit harsh on them, but like I, you know, I think they have tried many, many iterations. I'm sure they have, yeah. Of mm -hmm. like changing around the orb, changing around the utility. I remember so many like just either either PTR or experimental or just clips of things they tried of like, well, if you you can mass fade, you know, fade your teammates, you can fade through your teammates to give them that. something. Oh God, cleansing you can, your team with the Yeah, fade. like there was there was, was uh, there was all these attempts to try and make Mora have this utility. I think some perhaps where the discrepancy in the opinions lies, I'm more in the Boger spectrum of these opinions because I think we're right. tank. We play a fair amount of tank, and if you see a more, if I see a Moira lock in my team, I am worried. I'm like, this game <laughs> is gonna be hard. This guy's perma flanking. He's not gonna heal me. Like, I'm worried, especially if I get like a Moira Mercy, because the the problem is you get like a Moira, you know your other support has to be like a really good utility pick. Because if they pick yeah. Mercy mm. or like. Or like they pick life weaver, you're just like, okay, so my team can provide heals and that's it. If they will anti nade me once, that's it. I'm done. Uh, I'm toast. Yeah, I agree. That's my issue. Okay. With yeah, you know what? That makes utility. sense from your perspective, actually, and like, I, uh, on how you would feel. I want to add to the points you've made is that I don't think Moria sucks in lower elos in the sense that you can carry so many games on Moria. You can insta lock Moria below GM and carry every game. In my opinion, like below Masters, 100% of the games, super free. But once you hit Masters to GM and my POV, it's just so annoying to have a Moira player, right? As SVB said. And second of all, I just don't like the design of the character. I just hate it, you know? It's like, like, why would you play Moira if you want a DPS? I, I barely see Moira players nowadays. Even the Moira OTPs, they don't play Moira. Like, why would you play more there's if you want to There's definitely a few ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, course there is. Of course there is. Of course there is. There's always exceptions, but they're really uh, rare in my in my true. opinion. True. And, uh, like, in the sense that, why would you play more when you can just play Laurie nowadays or Kiriko if you want to DPS and flank and do silly stuff? Why would you play more uh, for, like, a rush comp when you can just play Baptiste, for example? It's just so much better to play Baptiste. I really don't like, I want to emphasize, I think Moore's heals suck. I, I really believe they suck. It heals so slowly, in my opinion. You can just spray it around, but it's so slow compared to Baptiste, which is instant, just go boom, you know, boom, boom. Uh, it's 
like life weaver can just chuck healing across the map and it's like 75 per shot if you charge it up to full it's just so yeah, much better target though yeah of course like... of course but honestly how often are you all stacked in a game for watch 2 overwatch 2 everyone's yeah. spread out everyone's playing their game it is so rare to see everyone stacked up to heal them like in overwatch 1 it barely happens everyone's just playing their own game especially with the new releases that are more solo centered you barely get the maximum value from the moira spread and again if you want to play a rush comp just play baptiste what is the point of playing moira at that point it's for people who can't aim <laughs> i think it's okay <laughs> to have heroes that are like a bit yeah. more simple to play don't don't get me wrong kids. i think moira yeah, is yeah. a tutorial hero i i, I don't <laughs> think there's anything wrong with moira in the sense but i just dislike it right like, i i think it's okay to have a character like moira if somebody starts the game they can play moira this is a tutorial hero it is straight okay. up a tutorial hero in my opinion i don't want to offend any moira players it's okay to have characters like these i just don't like the character <laughs> Okay. I, I know also, you said the healing is slow, but I also play, I look at numbers all the time. Her healing is actually one of the highest. It's still 70 maybe. per second, and it's higher than like almost all the other ones. But she does run out of juice eventually. But he It also runs eventually. out of juice as well, right? Compared to Baptiste, he keeps chugging heals and he can press shift. And it's like, all yeah. right. Well, I it's think 70 the other. 70 per second. But yeah, 70 sorry, per I'm second. No, no, no. No, that's, no, no, you're right. Please, please do keep interjecting. It's whenever you feel like that's what you guys are here for. So keep giving your opinion. I was oh, gonna say podcast. I think it's another another um, no no keep going. You, you you're my friend. Interrupt. I'll I'll pull the hammer down if I feel like you're being a dick. Mm -hmm. I'll just be like shut up, Kark, you right click mute. Shut up. Let me say my um, piece. Now yeah, no, you go ahead now. I'll just you, be like, you right click mute. Speak. You must. No, speak I was gonna now. say that I think that I think more is also another case of heroes left behind from the transition from Overwatch one to two because I think it made sense in a six v six situation to have a hero that like mass clump like the whole reason where I came and the more comps and goats and qu slambulance the quad tank existed because you could stack six people on top of each other and just like more one moira orb everybody's full hp and then you spray a little bit more so like that made sense it's also probably why we have seen the evolution of the tiktok moira is because as the game has moved away from that from everybody clumping and running together it makes no sense to run moira as a support healer right it's like well, actually, what's better is to just go duel a guy, and if they can't hit a shot, your shots are auto hitting. Every, you know, your tick damage is auto hitting the entire time. Plus, the damage orb is guaranteed damage. If it, you're basically putting a timer, which is also why she's so strong in the metal ranks, which is why like she's really dominant. I think you get whenever I see gameplay from the metal ranks, Moira everywhere. Like it's Moira mirrors, right? It's like Moira mirrors all the time because it's guaranteed damage and guaranteed healing. Which is good, but also then, yeah, it, it kind of hard puts a ceiling on the hero, which is also fine. I agree with Karku that it's okay to have a hero that's just like, and Boger put it perhaps bluntly, but training wheels hero. Like, you know, you kind of, you, you, you wet your feet learning the me mechanisms of the game. And then if you want higher output, you go for one of the higher mechanically intensive supports. Yeah, if you're skilled enough to like, that's why I was like, why not play BAP or whatever? But it's because like those people, players can't play path so they play yeah Mora. which is which is yeah, yeah which is totally understandable and also bear in yeah. mind that you know not everyone needs to be like treated that way yeah. like some people don't have the you know the time or they don't want to or they they have the mechanical like the physical inability to go and grind to, to be able to shoot stuff in the head so it's totally okay with me like more is fine with me in that sense i just do think she's been left behind in the transition which is why mm. It's which is why I think so many people DPS Moira because it is actually ironically the best, most reliable way to get value because you can't guarantee your teammates will be clumped enough to get healing output, but you can guarantee that if you flank on someone in the back line, everything you do is going to hit and they have like yeah. you know, three seconds to kill you back, otherwise, you kill them. And you make space and you have a free escape. And I know when you guys said you two as tank players, like you get a little worried because you're not sure of how they play it. It's, it's especially bad when the other support is playing something that's not synergistic with it or something that can complement the flanking Moira. So then you as a tank feel like, oh God, I'm going to lose because like I have, uh, I'm not going to get any heals. But maybe it's, it's different for me as a support. If I see another Moira lock and I'm like, all right, that's fine. Like I'll play around it. If I see them doing that, I'll play on or play something that can still like support my tank and I let them make space and like for the most part I think I have like a disgusting win rate with like in my in, in recent memory every time I play with the Moira I win so that's why I'm like extremely biased I actually that's why I've been defending the the TikTok no, that's totally I think fair. the play style is actually very viable if done right if done right the problem is like the one dimensional play style or like I can see why like maybe like the platinum or diamond or like the lower metal rank 
uh, Moria players get frustrated when they see a clip of a TikTok Moria in high elo. They don't understand why it's working there. Then they just fixate and they just only flank, and then it becomes too predictable. You have to do it at the right times, opportune times, and you're capitalizing on certain comps where you can, you know, punish enemies with the flank Moria. Like, you can play against a comp that has literally zero CC, then you're literally guaranteed never to get stunned out. You can time perfect escapes with Fade, and you can just be a menace and make so much space for your team. But, yeah, I think Moira's... I like Moira. I actually... Support debate, I think Moira's fine, but... No, that's totally fair. I, again, I think... I don't play I think her, though. I'm not a Moira man. <laughs> oh, you're like quick to distance yourself. No, I, yeah, again, I think myself. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's. I think it, again, it depends because because when I also when I play support, like I don't give a shit. Honestly, I don't give a shit what my other support picks most of the time. Like I, I will try and adapt to to the comp, but like it won't bother me if my other support picks more. Right? Like there's not there's nothing uh -huh. that my other support could pick that would bother me too much. If they're like they're gonna play Lucio, okay, I'll adapt. They're gonna play more, okay, I'll adapt. It's I think the difference is again when you're a tank player, you see that. So it bothers like, you when you play tank, but it doesn't bother you. No, when it you doesn't play bother support. me when I play support because I can uh, I can okay. fill around it, but with the tank, yeah. sometimes you cannot. As a tank, you sometimes uh -huh. there's nothing you can do that will compensate for what's about to come so okay. i think that's how i think that's where the the discrepancy perhaps lies but largely i also think she's fine so let's move on then to iliari let's talk about the newest support hero uh emmy why don't you give us your thoughts on iliari um i mean i think she's a very fun character to play i think her kit is um well made in the sense that it's it's just fun um, but I think Pylon is too much, um, with how much damage she does. So I don't necessarily know what the fix is to that. Maybe like, a uh, longer cooldown or like less health on the Pylon because it has become like shooting turret simulator in ranked and it's awful, but, um, she's fun to play. I like being able to shoot at other people while my Pylon just heals my teammates I, mean, I this is I have given this no thought, but as all, on top of what you're saying, it just gave me an idea, which is like maybe the pylon should just be a timed thing. You know, like how Sim TP. Yeah, that's kind of. You drop it and it times too, out. Yeah. Go ahead, no, go ahead, finish your thought. No, no, I just, I'm just agreeing. Um, yeah, I yeah, I'm not sure what the fix is because like there is a little bit of um difference in good alaris and bad alaris in which good alaris will constantly move their pylon whenever the fight is moving so like the fight comes starts moving towards you you take away your pylon before they can damage it and i like that aspect of her because it makes you have to think about like your pylon placement and i guess i'm kind of worried if you if you put it on a timer that it would nerf her too hard i guess like it would be, I don't know. It would be unfun. I don't know. Okay, car Q. Okay, I think Alari's pretty close to being in a spot where she she's good. I think Pylon, instead of having it be on a timer, you just remove the shield health, so it's not as annoying for other players to poke it down. So it really forces you to put it in a good spot. It can be super annoying as like when Bogra's saying with Winston, you have to like slowly like if it's slightly peaking the hitbox, you charge your little like Winston cannon, you shoot it once, and by the time you charge it again, it's starting to heal a little bit because <laughs> it takes so long. So you could get rid of the shield health. Give it 100 health. I think it's like 150 or 125 right now. You can just put it at 100. Standardize it with the Junkrat Trap. Standardize it with a um, Bap Lamp, which is 100 right now. It doesn't need that. You, it, it put the onus or the pressure on the Alari herself to put it in a good, reliable spot. Yeah, and I, I think like that's that a good start. And I think the nerf to the healing already from the first iteration, it used to be, what, 40 HP every 0.9 seconds? It's 30 now. That's a big nerf. It's like a 25% drop-off. And I read the uh, the blog director's take where they had the stats on how much disproportionate healing the pylon was doing to the team uh, versus, like, her heal beam. And it was like the pylon was accounting for, like, 67% of all of Alari's healing, which was too much, right? It's just free. You don't have to do anything, and the pylon's AFKing. So out of 10,000 healing, it's healing 6,700. Like, that's actually kind of crazy, right? That it's doing that much. And now it's that nerf that they added. I think they the updated article, they said it's, like, in the lower 50%, which is a bit more reasonable. Uh, the next part to, to touch her, in my opinion, again, remove the shield health, drop the HP down to 100. So there is uh, some counterplay to it if you break it. And um, I think we're in a good spot. And I think uh, all the nerfs 
as well, including the ones who are ultimate, have kind of put her in a reasonable spot. You're good if you can hit land your shots, and you should be rewarded for that. Uh, the headshot multiplier is not, you know, 2x. It's only 1.5. A little high, but... You know, there may be another argument that it's doing too much, but are people complaining right now so much about the Alari's like DPS output, or is it more about the pylon? And I think more people are still focusing on pylon rather than like Alari's output. It's kind of like a given right now that you know that's her her role, and I think that's okay. So she's very close to being balanced. Pylon slight tweak, and I think we're in a good spot. Well, before I go to Boger, one thing I will mention that I know SK would have mentioned had she not had to sure. peace out because of her illness is the hitbox of the primary fire of Iliari. Mm. It's not it's not the same as a, a normal hit scan bullet. It's bigger. So yes. it's actually a lot more generous to get the damage out than with a normal uh you know shooter. So I think that I think uh, uh, SK I hope will forgive me for saying this. I think she would say that that needs looking at um because it's perhaps a bit too generous. And then you can think about adjusting the other parts but i think that obviously makes it add to the idea that like well as she said if when i'm playing ash if i whiff my shots i get nothing with the liari i can just i'm still free getting value because the shot is just bigger so perhaps something to consider boger your thoughts on Iliari, who you played a fair amount of as well i think Lari. i like saying lark is funny i know it's mm -hmm. wrong but Lari is an awesome character i love Lari. she's so cool i like her damage i like people are going to complain that she deals too much damage i don't i don't think that's a problem like her damage is really high but it's not annoying like zen discord where it kind of like zen discord just buffs everyone's damage plus then deals a lot of damage and that's really annoying especially when he's meta with lari she deals a lot of damage but you still have to aim it's a lot more forgiving than other hit scan so i, I don't think it's a big problem because you you miss out on a lot of healing right like if you're dpsing a lot you can't heal a lot, and her only consistent heals is her pylon at the end of the day. I think pylon needs a little bit of a change. It's just so obnoxious. But first, pylon goes through shields, the healing. It's so stupid, in my opinion. Because if I'm diving to Winston and I bubble the pylon off, I, I still need to focus it. And I think that's stupid. I think at it least... It doesn't heal through barriers. It does. No, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Unless I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. I, have, I, I might be wrong. Let me check. We gotta, we gotta check I'm like ninety nine percent sure. Didn't expect this to be the part of the debate, but chat, Maybe chat, I'm check wrong. as well. Chat, Maybe chat. I'm wrong. If you okay, I might be wrong. Between it, it's not gonna. I don't know. It. it feels like most of the time it heals still, but my, I might be wrong. I'm sorry, Kark, you corrected me. Mythbusters. But, um, Mythbusters. I mean, you can edition. just. I mean, you can just move away from the shield at the end of the day, and you know, you can get healed, and you need to focus on the pylon if you want to kill it, and it takes a lot of time, especially if playing tank. And it's just annoying, like you said, right? Like maybe some, like some duration that needs to be added before it breaks. Like Emmy said, I think that would be good. I think her damage is good. I think what Lari does really well is you can really recognize the good Lari players, uh, and you can see which ones are really bad and which ones are really good. Because when I play with ML7, for example, even though her healing is really low, he still manages to get insane amounts of heals and insane amounts of damage because he's really thinking about pylon placement he's thinking about his burst healing and when you get a really good ult off uh a lot of people are going to complain that it's unfair and it's broken i think her ult is unfair in my opinion her ult is actually really cool uh it's really easy to counter right you can cleanse it really easily you can eat it you can deflect it you can do something you can bubble it off like one bubble can just cancel it uh Life Weaver 3 can destroy it as well. You can block it with that. I think it's really easily counterable. And when you see a Lari pop off in the kill feed with an ult or something, it's like, wow, that's cool. That's really cool. And I think a lot of heroes have missed the mark with... Uh, back in the day, especially when the game was new, you had a lot of moments where like, wow, seeing the 5k with, bla uh, with Blade, 6k with, K uh, with Blade was really cool, right? Uh, uh, and through time, like it became more normalized. So a lot less, you know, wow, a lot less surprising but with Lari because she's new and she has this pop-off factor i think it's really cool to see a Lari pop off i think it's really awesome to see the kill feed glow up with like whoa Lari got like four or five k with her because a lot of people again we're gonna say it's really easy to get value from it but 
when you shoot the lorry ult, you can actually see where it's going to land on the floor as well, right? Like, it actually shows it to the enemy team. It's actually really easy to avoid. You go behind the wall as well. And I think it takes a lot of skill to actually get a lot of kills with it if the enemy team is good. You know, obviously, if somebody's smurfing on people, you're always going to get value. But in a mm -hmm. balanced match, I think a good lorry will stand out. And it's really awesome to see it stand out. I think she needs a little bit of changes and i think she's pretty good i i really like laurie i really really like laurie people that complain about laurie i know skill issue <laughs> i think it's another example of like where the community is quick to overreact which is perfectly expected i think it's any any community ever when confronted with a new thing will either tend to overstate or understate its impact so we're already seeing that with the sombra changes people are like either it's broken either it's shit it could be both it could be either i don't know but Let's wait to find out. And with Iliari's ult, I think it was the same thing because off the rip, people were like, "Oh my god, it's like this is crazy. Everyone's just dying all the time. It's busted, busted, yeah, busted." Everyone's clumping together. Like, yes, it's, 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 I it's think like it's. 20, I said this. It's the 2016 Diva Bomb Reddit phenomenon yes, where people yes. are getting five Ks with it. Where it's like, okay, and once people learn how to use natural cover and like put up a shield, you don't get like 4K bombs or whatever anymore. And now with Ilari, you know, it's fucking spread out. You it's know, it's like. It's like a, a Sigma ult, I think, in many ways, because it's like when Sigma ults, immediately mm. the first thing you do is everybody splits, right? And it's like, okay, well, now the worst thing is, is going to get one person, and that yeah, one, one person can be max. saved, right? I think I think yeah. at first people weren't... It's, it takes time, to be fair, to understand, to train your response to the ult, right? Because when you hear mm -hmm. the, taste the sunrise, like, you know, you, you, first time you're going to be like, what's the sun? Ah! Right, so you're just going to get burnt, right? So it's, it takes a few times for you to be like, oh, shit, I hear that, I'm splitting with my team, right? So I think like once we've gotten that now, you very rarely see the, you know, you rarely see the the 5Ks as Boger's talking about. So mm -hmm. I think that automatically solved itself. And I think that the not going through shields change helps with the frustration of like, I blocked it, but it went through anyways, right? So I think it's fine. Um, as yeah. you guys said, I think she's a really cool hero edition i think that yeah maybe the pylon is frustrating i think it's particularly frustrating for like low damage output heroes so like winston where it's like if i for example like because the pylon is going to be around the corner if i have to walk around the corner to start tasering down it's going to take like three seconds and it's not like the enemy team is afk for those three seconds right they're shooting the crap out of me in those three seconds i might not even get to finish it before i have to run away so Having it not regenerate would be good. You not know what regenerate, be... I think just lower its HP as well. I don't think it needs to have... Yeah, like, I don't 100. think the pylon needs to be tanking damage. It should be like, if it's getting no. hit, it's dead, right? It's like, yeah. I feel like it should be quite shit in HP terms. Because it's like, the whole point of it is supposed to be that you place it well. Not that it tanks a bunch of damage while you're shooting it. So I fully I, agree with that. I, I think agree. like even Especially 50 HP is fine. Good in battle I think 50 even, feels yeah. kind of low. I think 100 is like a good medium ground. Like... I think it should be like sim turret HP. Like that's how much. Yeah. I don't know what a sim turret is, but like I'm like. I think it's fifty. I think if it's sim turret HP, they should lower the cooldown because the, then it's way too <laughs> easy to yeah. break. Yeah, it's really easy. Fifty I, is changes breakpoints for a lot of other. I think a hundred is good. Yeah, hundred. Two <sighs> shots on Winston. Point. Two charge shots on Winston feels yep. pretty good compared to three shots. Three charge shots on Winston feels so bad. You're just sitting AFK, just like yeah. Right, bang, right now bang. it's one twenty five, seventy white health, fifty shields. So isn't Hanzo at one twenty? Like Pharaoh's one twenty, Junkrat's one twenty. It's just like it tanks and it, it regenerates. So like I think a hundred flat would change it. So a lot of different heroes have options to so just tap it really quick and get rid of it. Fair enough. I'll default yeah. to you guys on that one. Although I still feel like fuck that. I I, I think <laughs> I feel like once you start shooting it, it should die. I don't think there has to be a tanking element yeah. to it. So you know, that's you my... know what else they should change? They should yeah. they should not have Alari do more damage in the sun versus dark oh, versus dark right. maps. Yes, of course. True. Yes, true. Guys, true. Yes, <laughs> really, really, um, really, yeah, gimmicky thing, guys. Let's add that. Let's yeah, remove that. Yeah, super gimmicky. Why does she do, like, I think know, sometimes I, headshots on sunny maps versus... They, maps? they should definitely... I agree. They should definitely change that. It's yeah. horrible. Okay, so let's then move on to perhaps what will be a less controversial hero, but maybe will. Ana. So how do we feel about Ana? We've talked about her quite fondly. I'll go to Emmy, the Ana main first. Uh, I and... love Ana. I think she's great the way she is right now. That's all I gotta say. I think a lot thing. of people, I've had a lot of people in my community specific, well, not a lot, a few say that they really hate her abilities, but I mean, there's a reason Ana is fun. She's going to have something. All right, uh, Karaku, you're also an Ana enjoyer. Yes, Ana good. 
That's Anna it. Good. Wow, it's going to be the shortest Anna section. Boger, <laughs> Boger, uh, Anna Good. Un can be punished. I, I think right Anna is... Oh, per I, I love Anna. It's perfect. I, I think people that complain about Anna are just silly. Like, what, why are you... Like, I really like Anna because, as you said, and as I said, there's a lot of risk or reward. If you use your nade aggressively, you cannot use it defensively. Like, there's a huge cooldown. If you miss your sleep, uh, people are going to be like, it's easy to hit sleep. It, it's not that easy, you know, like, especially not on a tank character. If it's a squishy, it's so hard to hit your sleep, especially in lower elos, but, because you just don't have the experience or whatever. But when you hit it, it feels good. When you get hit with the sleep, you never say, oh, she got lucky. You're always like, oh, she outplayed me. When she hits a big nade, it feels good for your team, and it feels bad for your team, uh, for the enemy team, in the sense that now you're all dead, but you can eat it, you can cleanse it, you can block it with a shield. There's a lot of counterplay, you know? It's fun to counterplay an Ana. It's fun for an Ana to play around you as well. There's a lot of layers, again. I think it's really cool. I think her nano boost is really cool. I, everything about Ana is really cool. It, it might be really frustrating for tank players like Ramatra and Roto, because they have no way to deal with it. Not, no, none at all, but... It's just the character you play. Like, what? <laughs> you can't nerf Ana just because she's good against Ramatra and Roadhog. Uh, and, like, it's just the sleep dart in the nade. It's just characters getting countered by it, but it sucks. What, what, like, what? Are you going to nerf a character that's perfectly balanced because your character sucks against it? I don't know. Like, like, there's characters like Bastion that are really annoying that counter everything. And, like, they counter it by just pressing shift. Ana still needs to hit her abilities, right? And at the same time, your team can just go Kiriko and cleanse it. Like... I don't know. I think Anna's perfect. I, I I love Anna. I think Anna needs to stay the way she is. She can she fits all the time in different metas. You can always play her uh, combo with another character like a Genji. It's just really cool. I I really like Anna. Okay. Well, I will try yeah. and push back on the on the Anna Appreciation Society over here, which is that people I just think that feel like while there is all this great skill element to her shots and whatnot, the cooldowns just pop possess so much value to change the state of a game that perhaps that's just too much power to have in two abilities which is that nade can potentially just win in a fight on its own and a sleep dart on something ends ends an ult potentially right it's like sh shuts down a complete ult so how do you guys respond to these feelings that like yeah okay there's skills in the shooting or whatever but most of the time you dominate just by using these cooldowns I think there's a lot of counters to both her cooldowns, yeah. but on all all roles, actually. I mean, there's lots of cleanses. Diva Defense Matrix lasts for 20 years. Zarya has two bubbles. I think there's a lot of stuff that counters her. True. And it's a skill. There's skill. Sh I know you say, you say, yeah, there's skill shots, but I think that is a bigger thing than people give credit for. I can understand why people don't like Suzu or Lamp. You look at the floor and press it. Um, I mean, yeah. with, with Nade, if I want to get an offensive Nade, I have to think about, like, their shields, their matrixes. Sleep Dart is a hard projectile. Slower projectile is a wind-up animation you have to get used to. There's, like, fast movements you have to account for. So I think um, that's the part where, like, it feels good when it hits and, like, there's ways to, to counter it, you know? Or ways to play around it. Playing against the Ana. Yeah. You can you can say that about the cooldowns for like you can say that about the Rhine Shatter. I know it's an oath and everything, but like if it hits, you die. You know, like but again, you can suzu it, you can cleanse it, you can bubble it, you can block it with the shield. Like it's not like Kiriko, like Kark you said, it's, you just throw it out and that's it. Like you actually need to think, like you need to think when you use it. Like if an Ana hits her nade and her sleep dart every single time. She's good at the game. Uh, like, she's popping off. It feels good. When a Kiriko hits her Suzu every time, it's just Kiriko. That's it. You know, it's just, it's hard to miss it, right? And, uh, for example, with Ana, like, people, when there's a Roadhog in the enemy team and you have an Ana, even in my top 500 games, that Ana still can't land a single sleep dart or a single nade against that Roadhog. It's not to pick the hero, land the abilities, win the game. It's like, you actually need to know what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I think it's really cool to have characters like that. It's okay to have simple characters. It's a lot, it's, a lot, uh, it's also okay to have characters that can express their skill. And, uh, you know, there's a high skill ceiling as well. Like, there is a reason why ML7 is like the Ana player, because he really knows how to play Ana. And that's really cool to see. Like, I, I think it's, I love Ana and people that are mad about Ana, I don't know, just bubble it, cleanse it, <laughs> matrix it. I don't know, man. Like, there's so much more annoying characters than Ana and people still focus on Ana just because she can sleep or nade you. Her cooldowns are so long and if she misses it, she's dead. No value. Well, we do you have to... nerfed it too. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go I ahead. Haven't... 
I was going to I was going to butter you up a little. I was going to say we got two amazing honor players in the call as well in in Emmy and and CarQ. So obviously mm-hmm. I love my man ML. But, yeah, uh, but ML7, come ML on now. Ah, come yeah. on. He's, He's crazy. He's a yeah, different come on. level. No, nah, they're being humble. They're being humble. These guys are both great in their own rights as well. So I do want to point that out. Yeah, Car- you're right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I mean, good. yeah, no, I think I agree. As much as I would love to, to sort of c- concoct some argument for, for why. I think Anna's frustration speaks to frustrations with actually other things. So I think often we talk about Winston and Ryan as these like, stalwart tanks that are litmus tests for the state of the game, right? It's like when Winston and Ryan are good, everyone's happy and, and the game is good. I think in many ways, Anna is like that. Although I know she's been like very commonly meta for many years. I think you should look at generally the state of Anna's power as the benchmark for the other supports. So I think that like the way she operates again with the skill reward, I think is what makes any power that she has fair. Whereas I think when other supports give disproportionate amounts of power for less requirement, I think that's where frustration arises. So I think, yes, I do agree that it can be very frustrating to be anti and slept, but I think that we should look at the... the actually, she has that risk-reward ratio that I think is uh, is what makes it fair. So Yeah. And I think... I think the only argument against her would be the support passive. And I Ooh, think that's yes, for like almost... True. Yes, corner. that's a fair point. That's a very fair point, which is that it made more sense in her watch one when she had to choose to nade herself. Now that she can heal yourself automatically, it definitely add, it definitely takes away a lot of that risk reward. So that is a very fair argument uh, that you brought right. up there, Emmy. So I, I do think, I mean, while we're here, do you guys think support passive fine? Like, should we change it? I think you can even delay it even more. What's the what's the time for like, you know, when like you're a Zen, you know, the shield health, Zarya, mm-hmm. Zen. How long does that take for that to kick in? That You'd be the one who'd bad. know. You'd be the one who'd Isn't know it, if anyone would three, know. Is it three seconds? I have to ch- check it again. But like, you can match that, and I think it'd be good. But right now, it got nerfed back to two seconds. I think, right? I, right I'm now, gonna, shield, okay. the, here's here's three the hot seconds. Take, right? Is that what they're saying? Then maybe three seconds on the support passive and match it with the shield health, and it won't feel as bad, and you still get the benefit of like playing in cover. So here's the hot take. Pretty- then here's the hot take. Why? Why? Yeah. We're, we we keep trying to bring supports on par. I'm sure this will this this will be a discussion. The great DPS debate coming next, but if so, if we're kind of in this ideology of like, well, supports should be in line and power with DPS. They should be able to DPS and kill stuff and duel stuff. DPS almost bar a few cannot heal themselves. Supports most of them can heal themselves already, right? Why do they need the passive as well? Because, like, to give an example, right, let's say you're a, a DPS off angling somewhere. You get chipped out, you pretty much have to leave. Because unless you brought a support with you, you can't stay on the off angle anymore. Okay, maybe you have to go get a health pack. But that's still a long time out to fight, right? Compared to if I'm a support and I want to off angle, I can still heal myself most of the time. So I can maintain the off angle as long as I want and keep pressure and keep pressure. And keep... So I don't lose value for trying to do something. So there's the hot take argument that I the DPS side of things. If the if the supports are gonna have it, do we need to give it to the DPS? And if the DPS are gonna not have it, then should the supports not have it? I feel like that's such a hard thing to answer because <laughs> there's the DPS. There's so many characters on the DPS roster. There's some that can kill supports way faster than a support could kill them. But at the same time, there's also DPS that feel terrible to play against supports because of the passive and their abilities. So I don't know. It's, just, it's really nuanced. I think I'm on this. I lean more towards the side that the support passive is kind of OP. But I do too. Um, I just also feel like without the support passive, it's more likely that supports are just going to get might go back to the original state where it felt terrible to play non-mobile supports. Agreed. Three seconds. That's my final take right now. Three <laughs> my seconds. Final offer. I don't have a solution. Sorry. Match Talk- to the shield regeneration thing, and I think we're in an okay spot where they won't be bad. Um, yeah, I think that's probably fair. Three seconds is a long time to. It is a long you, time. If, if you have to stop peeking, for example, for three seconds, that is a long time. So I think that's mm-hmm. fair. Also avoids I, uh, the. Go ahead, Booger. I was gonna say. I'm sorry for cutting in. Go ahead. I think supports are just better than DPS. Straight up, most of the time, some like supports, uh, not some, some, yeah, of course, some supports. Like, uh, I think Laurie just out damages all the time. Baptiste just does better DPS and heals as well. Like, I feel like DPS's job right now is just to counter pick. 
you know like like they just pick like a character to destroy the enemy tank or something like that and that's it you know like you you just ruin their game of course some dps are really good farmers is really good you know bastion is really good whatever 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 but like what is the like like supports can heal themselves can heal the others and deal more damage than dps characters i don't mind them dealing a lot of damage but the dps even have a passive what's their passive reload they got rid of it, yeah, yeah they got rid of the movement speed movement speed who made it disproportionately too strong for some of the flankers yeah though. but who so, like, cares about reload design. like dps has no yeah, passive exactly. basically and then exactly. supports and tank have a passive which are pretty good like tank has a, a okay passive i think it's pretty all right yeah. But D but DPS just don't have a passive, and that's what sucks about DPS in my opinion. Like I feel like if you I whenever I play DPS, I just play Bastion, just run around the map, like, and I just kill the tank and I win the game. And that's it, you know. Like it's not fun gameplay. If I play a character that takes a little bit more skill, I I just get destroyed by you know a support character or something. Like it's still you can still carry a lot of the time, but I feel like there's a lot more emphasis on supports like Baptiste and Laurie. That deal way more damage than DPS do, unless your DPS is literally Kevster, right? Like, and uh, it's just, I think it's just that I think that's why a lot of DPS are frustrated with support. They can do what DPS does, or well, some supports can, and also heal at the same time, and also cleanse abilities or like uh, counter abilities as well. Make sure you ask in the DPS debate on what they think a new passive. Oh yeah, because I do oh, think sure. they definitely need a thing because the, the the this current passive with the reload doesn't encapsulate all of them. I think, the the I think the I think the passive. But, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go. Oh, I was gonna say. I think you should actually split the. I know, like they 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 like like they merge the defending defending DPS or whatever. Remember Overwatch one where they had different yeah, categories yeah, yeah. for or builders. I actually think you could have like subcategories for support uh, DPSs to have a different passive depending on their sort of thing and just like be like two. Nothing I too think complicated. Yeah. I'm gonna be real. I think the the passive thing is an outdated gimmick. Like it's like it was mm -hmm. a marketing ploy for five v five to be like, we have we're gonna introduce passive so that every like because that was their whole thing. It was like the way we're going to five v five. Each role will have a passive now, and like it'll uh, it'll help them adapt to the five v five situation. It's like so, for some heroes, it's really good. For some heroes, it's really like not is negligible and useless. So like, could we not just balance those heroes in a way that? addresses the things they need from the passive anyways rather than like mm. this blanket thing that for example with Mer the mercy right uh, mercy is the great example of support passive being shit it's like well i already had this True. so you gave me nothing lucio it's like i already had this you gave me nothing right so it's like well on ana it's busted but on lucio it's useless so like what are we doing and it's like the same thing with all the other roles as well right it's like well, well i would argue that tanks actually it's good for all of them i was gonna say I think the tank yes like, yeah, but that good, i mean that doesn't actually. need to be a passive as much as it could just be a feature which is like they're fucking giant beefy boys surely this <laughs> so they this, all have this... a unique shared thing i think that still fits the identity of a, of a group passive but, yes but the was... idea of like a boop moving a tank is not re okay you could define it as a passive but it's not really even it's like it makes sense it's like, yeah, this fucking Brazilian DJ can't boop this 20,000 ton Reinhardt man with his the power of music. Like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Like, so I think that's fine. But like, it's not even, it doesn't really even factor in as like a game defining passive. It's just like, a, okay, they're not getting booped all over the place, which makes sense. As opposed to, I think that the support passive, which totally changes the whole game. I do agree with that. Well, the DPS passive also changed the game, the first one. So, which like, is why I'm saying get the fuck, get the rid yeah. of it, like, because it it made Genji busted, but then there's like Arg crying in the corner. And he's like, I got a kill now. It's hard <laughs> to shoot now. It's hard to get a second kill because my movement ADS is different now. So it's like I, mm. if 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 you're applying a role passive and it doesn't actually help the role, why do we have it? True. It doesn't actually help the role. It helps Ana. It helps Bap. But doesn't well, it's only help Mercy, Mercy. That's the only one that didn't help. That's it. It still well, helped Lucio again. Else. It helps Lucio. All... No, it helped Lucio. It definitely helped Lucio. I mean, how I much? I would just say it didn't help Lucio. You a could lot. just heal yourself. They actually... Yeah, they nerfed the self healing from Lucio from like a sixty percent penalty. It was his is his aura passive. Sorry, not not the support passive. Support passive was good for him. It made him super. It allowed him to like wall ride and play the red at Lucio more because it's, it kicked in. Dude, so you could stay I mean, on speed and get healed. You nobody read at Lucio's anymore. I feel like. Uh, bro, uh, bro, uh, have you played with Frogger? Okay, <laughs> well, Frogger well, well, speeds in, bro, just kills the back bro, lane and dies. Uh, for everybody. real, though, how many Reddit Lucios do you see anymore? For real, for real. Because I don't. I don't see them anymore. A lot. Also, Frogger's lying then, because he fucking coached me, and he's like, Reddit Lucio's dead. 
man coached oh. me and he's like dude don't read it lucio read no, it lucio played, is dead i played with frog he just speeds in at mach 10 speed in the back line dies every fight <laughs> oh, and just uh, oh, unlucky bro he's unlucky. only saying it to you because because he said you had a skill issue and you didn't know how to wall ride Boom. bro bro Ooh. wow wow Ooh. i'm adding the spice here you're really gonna be like that kark you're really gonna be like that all right yeah we'll fight it out bro at blizzcon <laughs> Yeah, let Lucio won me, won me. I'll, I'll floor CO your ass off. <laughs> I mean, um, I still think that it's. I don't think it's. It really is necessary. I think it's. It's a gimmick because if you need to add certain things to characters, you can just add them. You don't have to add it. It just creates more problems than it's worth. But that's my opinion. So. Yeah, yeah. But then that means you'd have to add it all for tanks. Would you argue that any tank didn't benefit from no, the, the tank? No, the tank. Passive? So you can keep the tank passive, but it doesn't have to be. So only every role has a passive. It doesn't have to be that every role has to have a passive, right? Okay. It's like the tank passive makes sense in just a physics term, I think. It, or just like a, a game, you know, they talk about the game fantasy a lot. It just makes fucking sense that the tanks don't get booped that far. Like, if you're trying to boop a petite British woman, surely this, this like, 500 kg fat hog is, like, going to move a different amount to this, like, you know, like, it just makes sense to me. But regardless, I will defer on this point for a little bit for now as we move on uh to baptiste so we've talked a bit about bap uh boger why don't you start us off on your thoughts on bap baptiste is so annoying like bap gives so much damage he his shift is insane like so when i'll, I'll run you through the process of me diving a baptiste I am Winston. I jump Baptiste. That is, if he doesn't have anyone peeling for him. I jump Baptiste. He's alone. He should die. I jump him. He shoot, shoot, shoot my bubble. He gets half HP. He fucking presses shift. He shoot, 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 shoot. He gets half HP. He presses lamp. And I'm dead. Or I run away. What is what is the point? Like, I can't dive this character unless I spend the primer or he's stupid. And most of the time, they're not stupid. And they can also jump like a rabbit, like, up in the sky and still shoot me. And if, God, God forbid, somebody peels for him. Like, I, like, and his window... Like, his window is so annoying. If you're playing tank and you run into the street to fight or go near the payload or you jump in, if you jump in with Winston on a Baptiste and they have window, you just get tunnel snapped instantly. It is zero counterplay, right? And I, I, I hate it. I, 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 the entire top five fun lobby, is, uh, top five fun leaderboard right now is mostly like Baptiste. Like it's just people just play Bab, they just play their game. They FK, they don't FK, they just flank and they poo 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 poo, and they just heal across the map. His healing is insane, his damage is insane, his ult is, has so much carry potential, uh, and I, I think something needs to get changed about them. At least lamp. I don't know why they keep buffing lamp. Lamp is so annoying of an ability. It just makes everyone immortal. And it has so much HP as well. You can put it behind the corner. You counter everything. Like, at least Suzu, like, it's just for a second, for half a second. And Lamp is just sits there, right? Like, you're about to kill the entire enemy team. Nope, you don't kill them. Yeah, I gotta focus Lamp now. I'm like, okay, that was, that was really fun. Thanks for playing. Wow, I never thought I'd hear the term at least Suzu, but all right. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I actually think Suzu's stronger than Lamp, but that's just me. Nah. So, so Karki, you kind of saying that you felt BAP is really, really strong. Do you I do, elaborate? Though, yeah. I play a lot of BAP. I do. I agree, though. I think Bap exactly when when he walked us through the Winston thing. That's exactly my gameplay loop. Oh, Winston jumping, shoot, 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 shoot. He jumps. I'll spring into the air, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, he's getting me low. And then I'm back to full because of my self regen. And then if I get low again, I'll throw my lamp. And then by that time, he's probably like you know lost half his health. And if he has primal, then maybe that's the only time I die. But he had to expend primal for me. So you know. Another thing about Suzu and lamp comparison with Suzu, even though it's really annoying and cleanses makes people immortal. Sometimes you can block it with a bubble. Sometimes you can block it with matrix. With lamp, you can't do anything. It's just lamp. It's just press lamp, and that's it. There's nothing. So, so the reason why I think uh, Suzu's better is because uh, lamp still keeps you at a low HP. So, like it, it, sometimes if I block like the pulse bomb with it, they're still st and they break the lamp or like they live, but they're also still like at a very low HP in my opinion, for the most part. And there's um, there's some situations where it's good, but there's some situations where it's like way worse like in the sense that there's some places where lamp is so much better than suzu and some mm. situations where it's True. really bad yeah. for example if you play like havana circuit rail whatever you place lamp behind the corner and just spamming like you can't die right yeah, in that situation yeah, yeah. suzu is just worse in every way right mm. 
Yeah, I would say it still depends on the situation, right? But then okay, I well, guess it was you know, more that's... of like you saying that for sure that like Lamp is stronger than Suzu. Uh, well, that's we you know either way. That's neither. That's scenarios. neither here nor yeah. there. You know, that's subjective. You guys want to be one. strong. Yeah, it's it's okay. kind of you know besides the point. Emmy, like, do you feel like Fap is overtuned? And if so, like, what aspect do you think? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just because BAP can literally, like, solo carry. Like, it's more beneficial to play BAP selfishly than for your team. Like, to yes. use your abilities on yourself is more beneficial than for your team. And I think that kind of says a lot. Like, whenever Winston jumps me, a lot of times I'll just solo window him and kill him <laughs> because yep. it's easy. Um, and MO, I think... Honestly, I feel like Mo kind of got nerfed in Overwatch 2 just because of how spread out people play. And I think that's also why it's more beneficial to use it on yourself because you know you're going to save yourself. It's hard to use it on other people whenever they're all spread out. But yeah, I I feel like maybe... Um, yeah, I don't really know what the... F I think he just... I mean, maybe numbers on like his damage or matrix, but it's I, I just feel like he's going to be one of those characters that always benefits to play for yourself than for your team. Which is what Overwatch 2 wants in a way, right? It's yeah. The, the promise of Overwatch 2 was that. I do personally okay. don't mind it. I like it as a support player because like if I feel like I need that, then I'm going to play that character. But therein yeah. lies the irony in the 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 complaints of the tank role, for example, not to keep going back to it, is like, oh, yes, yeah, so the supports, you play for yourself, cool lamp for yourself. Oh, you want me to fucking make space for some other chump? You want, me to, you want me to occupy two supports and hope my team doesn't feed in the meantime while, like, I'm just here baiting cooldowns? Like, I think that's where the frustration, because the promise of, like, go, oh, do you I think, again, I think it should be like that. I do think BAP is, like, how it should play. It should be like, yeah, I'll do this. I'll handle this yeah. myself. That um, is a good point. Uh, I just want to say when Boger said they keep buffing, they haven't buffed Lamp. Lamp's been nerfed, but I actually think it's less about the Lamp and more about everything else he does. And as someone who plays a lot of, I have the best win rate in amongst all my heroes on BAP right now. And I actually think it's, well, I mentioned it earlier in the podcast, actually, now that I think about it, exactly what I think they need to change on him. You want me to go into that? Go for it. Yes, please. Okay. Number one, he doesn't need the, the, the flat HP or no, he used to have flight HP, but it used to, it doubles when they're less than half health. They don't need that. They can get rid of that, and he'd still be good. That's number one. That'll ru that will that will remove some of the you know the one be like as a Winston. It's like like imagine you take the bat down to half, and then he instantly chunks a hundred HP. Not only for himself, but the whole team gets the like a hundred HP instantly. Which is I, I, when they added that at the end of Overwatch uh, at two beta, I was like, are they crazy? I was just like, dude, bat is S tier, and then like I actually like he it, it it already did too much the minute they did that. That was number one, but Kiriko kind of outshined him at the beginning, which is why people didn't notice it too much, because Kiriko was also a different problem with the way Kitsune did, but that's a different story. So number one, they can get rid of the, 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 the flat HP thing. They don't even need that at all. Number two, I mentioned it earlier as well, it's the damage per bullet. Right now it's at 25 for a body shot. Um, 25, 25, 25 means 75. Hit all triple headshots, 150. Put it through a window, it does even more. Put it back down to 24, even 23 to like mess, change things up. And then you can't like um, window, like if you pop a window and you only hit triple body shots at 24, then it, 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 it changes a lot in some of the matchups. So they can actually revert the, the damage per bullet. That's number two. Um, number three, I remember when they also added the widescreen window. This is like old Overwatch 1. They never needed to do that either. I don't know why they kept giving Bap more back in the day when I thought he was good and he was a high skill hero because you need to learn his tempo and how to shoot and heal and shoot and heal and shoot and heal. And like once you maximize that, then he'd be very, very powerful in high elo. But I just think it was like the they kind of balance it with complaints of Bap feeling kind of weak and his ultimate feeling, oh, I don't know how to combo it with my Reaper or combo it with you know, my, uh, my, whatever, my Farah barraging or soldier visor, it's so small. And then they buffed it to make it like 16, nine widescreen. The old one looks so funny when you look back when it was just like a, a CRT, like where you play smash bro melee on like the small square, but like that in itself, if you selfishly was fine, but like everybody I, didn't understand back in the day that you're supposed to use the window selfishly anyways. And like, I feel like that was them trying to push it to use like for the rest of your team, like push him to be uh, more for the rest of your team. 
But like, I don't think he's a hero that plays that way or will ever play yeah. that way unless he gets reworked. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're very right to bring that up because I think the problem it creates is that what I found playing against BAP, I've played a lot of BAP as well and also agree with the, I think he's like the strongest support right now, honestly, um, other than like flank carry going. But um, mm. the frustration that comes against the BAP is like the reaction time to not die to a window is so small. Uh, it's like the window pops and if you aren't, 100% ready at that moment to like immediately find cover, there's a very la strong likelihood you just die. Because, the, cause the, again, it's like the entirety, like an entire lane basically is now it's just It's an entire damage. lane. Yeah. It's so just like if you bring damage. it back to the square and if you're, like if I shoot through it, like you, ha it, it's, it is a lot of damage, but like if I misplace it and it's like slightly off to the side, like your soldier beside you might still have to take half a second to like squeeze, scoot over and benefit from it, which will, like if you nerf the window back to a smaller square, it will give even just a little semblance of more time to push through it or like get into cover or give you an easier time as a tank to move past it. Cause that's one of the ways to counter the window is to like, you know, just like commit and go past the window and push them out. There's less angles that like the enemy team or the team with the BAP window can use to kind of like melt your shield or melt things to, to get through. So yeah, those sure. triple, those three nerfs, the flat healing, the damage per bullet, and you can revert the window. And because it compounded with the support passive that exists in the game, I still think that would make BAP a good hero, um, but not like as oppressive as he currently is. And again, I am a bat main, and I'm I'm for these nerfs because I don't think I thought it was just completely unnecessary. He's just I wanted, so strong. I want to say I was thinking about like I think Baptiste window has a lot of value and gets farmed really fast, right? Mm -hmm. But I, then I thought about it. Every support tool gets farmed. Not every single one. Some aren't, but like a lot of them get farmed really fast and have a lot of value. Do you think that's mm -hmm. an issue? Like I feel like Larry Ult is. Like, if you can use it and the enemy team doesn't, like, counter, like, it can get farmed really fast most of the time. And you can use it. Mm. You can win the fight. Baptiste window can get farmed really fast. You win the fight instantly if you know how to use it. Even mm. Life Weaver tree nowadays is really strong. If you just get it first, you just win the fight straight up. I don't know about other supports, but, like, these three, for example, they can farm their ult so fast. Ana, Ana can farm her ult really fast as well. Like, especially if you're good with Ana, you can farm Nano, spam Nano, get another Nano boost ready by the time Genji gets another blade or whatever. Like, you, you can just throw them out and they just win the fight instantly. Like, do you mm. think that's an issue? Like, I just thought about it. I, I feel like uh, there might be a problem uh, there. That's a. I had something to say about that. I actually think that's a. It goes into game design for for supports because damage and healing are equivalent in terms of alt charge, right? For those who don't know, every hero has a fixed amount of charge they need to get. They don't actually have these numbers. I wish they did. If you pressed F one, it's like okay, you know, like Baptiste needs sixteen hundred charge to get his ultimate and then there's the passive charge which is like 300 per minute i think that's the number it works out to and then damage is equal to the healing for charge so if i do 75 damage but then i look down and heal a team it's like 75 alt charge for pew, pew, pew 75 charge i look down i heal two people with my aoe that's like another 100 so i just gained 160 alt charge instantly and i think heroes need to be tuned to the amount they can maximally output. So heroes like Kiriko, who can actually, like, Kiriko rhythm, like, heal, damage, damage, heal, damage, damage, can build a super fast Katsune if they're hitting everything. Same with Bat. Bat builds his window really fast. I think Life Weavers is tuned because he is mostly focused on support, so I think, or healing, so I think his, uh, his rate is a little bit um, lower than I think the other ones. But yeah, I, I actually, that's something you've mentioned. I think Bat builds his window super fast for that reason. Super, super fast, because I can do both. That has to be like one of the fastest next to Ana, I would imagine. Yeah. And I think it's crazy how much value window yes. gets and how fast it gets built as well. Exactly. Yeah. So you either nerf the window itself or you can change the charges as well. So you start yeah, somewhere both. and then iterate off of that, which is why I would say start with like the smaller square first. And if people are getting less value of it overall, then it wouldn't be as, wouldn't feel as bad if they do, if he does build it quick. Because you're right, it is a guaranteed fight win, basically. Like, if you, if you uh, assume, let's say, assume a competent level, it's like, if I wanted to win a fight, I would just wait till their tank uses his cooldown. I pop window, kill him immediately, fight over, right? Mm. Like, and, yeah, and there's if you're, so much thought into it. You can just throw it on yourself. You don't even have to yes, use it. For you literally, yes. Literally, yes. You yourself yeah. will just kill the tank. Like, it's like, again, it's like Winston jumps, window, he's now dead. There's, there's no way in this time he's escaping. I will burn his bubble and mm -hmm. his HP pool in this time. Yep. So, and, and the fact that that's the first ult in the game means that you've guaranteed the first team fight win almost, right? You're like, okay, this is yep. this is done. So, 
and obviously and that's the why enemy I say team nerf both the bullet damage and the window size, and then they'll compound with each other and iterate off of that. And that's yes. why I suggested those. I like the car queue patch, so let's let's yeah. go with that. Then the car queue patch for Batiste, I think, will will serve us well. Let's move on then to the other B, Brigitta. I know that's not an insult. Um, so Brigitta, how do we feel? I mean, Sam's not here, but um, how do you guys feel about Brig Emmy? Uh, I honestly, Brig is one of my least played heroes, so I don't have a strong opinion about her. Um, I think she's pretty boring in the current state just because she's meant to just protect your other support for the most part. Um, I don't really feel like she's the OP right now. Um, but yeah, I don't have too, too strong opinions of Brig. So Karki, you were at Owl Finals. And, you know, it's yep. often pro play where, where people really talk about Briggs' power and just being able to, like, you know, just anchor a spot, make a, a support comp viable where it otherwise wouldn't be. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, thank God we're not in 2018 Brig where she could be defending and, like, just brawl on the front line because she was so tanky. I think she's in an okay spot right now. She's situational. And, like, I think they said Ana Briggs, the only support line that's able to survive, like, a 3-2-1 from Overwatch League level players when they Winston, Sombra, Tracer, jump you at the same time. It's the only thing that has a chance of living. So, um, I think Briggs... I don't play her that much, but like I'm never upset if I see a Brig on my team, to be honest, because it's reliable, it's safe, and I think uh, it's fine where she stands. I don't, it doesn't feel bad. And like I think when when the the stun came out on the alt, it's like annoying, but it's like only in the alt. So like the actual time amount of times you actually do pull that stun off is kind of low overall. I'm an averaged out over games. So, you know, and I think she's fine being a situational pick. With the way she, her design is, like, she's never going to be a one side. The problem is if she's, like, a, you must play it everywhere. That means she's just doing too much for, like, she's for her for her kit. And she has weaknesses. So she's limited by range, right? Like, if you play Flyers against the Brig, I, I, I literally do nothing. If I play Brig and they're playing Farrah Mercy, like, you don't, you're not supposed to, like, you have to switch off Brig or else you just, like... I pack some people, but I don't want to get too close to the tank to swing because, like, you know, you can get punished now as Brig because you are a lot squishier because you're 200 HP. Um, if you, like, if there's a Ramatra, you get punched through it or something. So it's like, she's fine for her situation, and I think it's okay. She's not weak as a hero, but, like, she is, she's strong where she's strong, and she's very weak in, like, you know, poke comps, for example. Like, why you why, why play Brig on, like, Circuit Royale? They're playing Bap Zen Sigma across the map. What, do, what am I doing here? I'm just standing, <laughs> like, you know. And that's it, fine. It's kind of like Zen. Zen's good on those long sight lines, and he's good for poke, and that's fine. Brig's design's good for, you know, anteing, or stopping, like, really heavy dive. And, yeah. Bogart, do you have a different opinion on, on Brig as a, a Winton enjoyer? I think... Brig is the def definition of annoying, like, uh, for the support role. Annoying like, it is <laughs> so annoying. Like, there's good Brig players and there's bad Brig players. I don't think Brigitte is necessarily broken, but if you're playing against a good Brig, you are not diving anyone. Like, it is, it is impossible to dive anyone. It is impossible to do anything as a tank. It's just so annoying. Uh, you're not going to play Brig every map, and Brig isn't good everywhere all the time. But when you play winston or devo or whatever like her entire job is to counter dives and she does it so well she does do it well where she's and, good. that's true yeah yeah, it's, yeah yeah it does and like her old like she just pops it and then she just stuns you and like it's a lot weaker than Br brigitte back in the day it's a lot better it's a lot more balanced but oh my god is it annoying you jump in with winston she just whip shots you you get your jump again like she already has whip shot again she whip shots you again like even if you manage to reach the back line she just throws heal packs across the map like life weaver throws his heels and then when she gets her ult she just waits for you to jump in and then she props q and then she stuns you and you die and that's it it's game over and playing against okay. a good brig is so infuriating uh 90 of the time and 90 of the time when you play winston or diva you just genuinely can't do anything that is the point of her, though. Yes, it is. Playing. But it's still annoying. <laughs> it's still annoying. <laughs> yeah. it's it still is. Annoying. It, yeah. As a support main, I like, like, as an Ana, Ana main specifically, I like having a Brig on my team because I know I get a personal bodyguard. 
Yeah. Well, like, is, it, is, this a, <laughs> is this another situation that you mentioned earlier, Boger, of like, well, the annoying characters will just exist and you kind of have to deal it, with it. It will exist. And what's annoying is you can't really counter it because like a good brig, she would just whip shot. What do you do? You place your bubble in the air and dive without bubble? No, you just die anyway. So it's just kind of the game. Like, what are you going to do? Delete brig? You can't delete brig. It's just... I, you don't meet these Brigitte's uh, that often. It's annoying for high elo where they're like people know how to play her, but in lower elos, you, you rarely play against a good Brig. I, I don't really think she's that OP. She's just really, really, really annoying and you can't really do much about it. And I think it's really easy to do something about her in the sense that, uh, again, if you play Flyers or you play Poke or whatever, you just kill her every fight. She can't do much. So. I think she's okay. I wish she was less annoying, but what are you going to do about it? Like, support players need some sort of peeling in the sense that they're really strong already. I'm not saying they're weak, but, uh, you know, in pro play, for example, there's nothing to do unle uh, against dive comps unless you have a break. That's why Brigana is so good, right? So, I was going to say, it's also I, in a way, equally annoying to play against, it, like, yeah. Genji, it, Tracer. It might be, it might be a necessary evil. Like, yeah. like, you know, it's annoying for tank players, but tank Playing tank has always been annoying to some extent. Like I think she's the least of the least problematic hero against tanks in the sense that I think she's annoying, but there's bigger problems well, when playing tank. Well, she's built. I think anytime a hero is built to stop something else, it will always annoy, right? Because like literally, mm -hmm. they made Brig because they were like, we need to stop dive. So of course, anytime you play dive and they're like, I am picking the hero whose job it is to stop you, oh, like it's going to be annoying, right? The same way that like. People complain about Reaper, as especially in Overwatch One, where it's like this guy, his job is to chase me around. So it's it's kind of lame and unnuanced in many ways, where you're like, well, wow, you're just you just beat me, I guess. But Emmy's right, I think, in that it, it is a necessary evil. It is like, well, it's annoying to get like hard dove by Genji Tracer and have like, oh, there's no way I live here. It's like literally. Unless I'm literally like twice the player this Genji Tracer are and have like a sleep one, nade one, two shot the other. Like now the Tracer also doesn't get two shot. I had to three shot the Tracer or two shot and nade her. You know, like it's like you're just, you're in a bad situation. So yeah, frustration, but perhaps largely we feel like a necessary evil. Kiriko then. How do we feel about Kiriko? Obviously a much discussion always about Suzu in any situation. But overall, how do we feel about Kiriko? Uh, we'll go to Karki first. Um, thank God they nerfed her Kitsune. That shit was so fucking strong at the beginning of the game. It was like triple cooldown rate. Right now it's 2x cooldown rate. But like triple cooldown rate meant you can get like three Suzus off in a span of like the entire alt. You Suzu once, pop your alt, Suzu mid mid thing, and by the end, of the, by the time Kitsune's over, you have another Suzu. So that was a. F I'm glad they did that. I mean, I think with Kiriko right now, like, I still think she's she's very good. Some people, I think my last two years, I put Kiriko and S here, like, pretty high aim. They're like, no, nah, Kiriko's not that good. I feel like it's just, it's just, <sighs> she's, uh, she's very versatile and she has many, many different play styles. And I think that's contributing to why she's, you know, um, you know, has so many varying opinions. I'm of the opinion that I think Kiriko is, like, pretty high up there, like, close to S tier still. Um I play her a lot. I still see her a lot in uh in in NA. It's mostly because of there's like a, a lot of Arissas and whatever lately, but like not so much not as much lately, but when there was a lot of Arissas, everyone just defaulted to like, you know, Bap Lucio or like Bap Alari. That's why Kiriko fell out. But she was never bad. Like Kiriko whenever I have like a Doomfist or Ball on my team, I don't know why like so, so many balls just start showing up again. I would actually just like play Kiriko because I can follow them around. She has mobility um i don't know i think i think the recent change where they where they put some of the power back into the body shot was actually a good change for the lower rank lucy uh kirikos i think you can't look at data as like a you can use data and analytics to help like inform decisions but you can't let them make decisions for you but i did see kiriko traditionally was not performing too well in lower ranks probably because like as much as people don't want to admit like you're not gonna be able to headshot every time triple headshot multiplier is kind of crazy where it you know it benefits that but like most people are having like 15 percent headshot or like lower or whatever right so like if 85 percent of your shots are body shots they gave a bit more power there a little less on the headshot um i think that's good kitsune rush still a very good ultimate the healing's a little slower compared to like what bap can output with orissa and like brawl stuff but i still think I don't know. I think I think Kiriko's still pretty good and pretty common. I don't know if people have a different opinion, but I, I think she's good. 
Well, I'm going to let Emmy give her opinion. I'm going to quickly go to the bathroom in the meantime. So, Emmy, the floor is yours, Kiriko. And if you are uh, over, then Boger take over. BRB. Okay. Um, I think uh, Kiriko, I think her, her imbalance is probably in Suzu and the fact that it has MO and cleanse. Um, I think her ultimate is okay. And a heal. Yeah, and heal. And a heals, yeah. actually. Well, I forgot to mention that, but I'll, I'll, I'll interject After later. Border. Yeah. Um, I love playing Kiriko because I know I can get out of jail free twice if I want to. Um, I like being able to dive with my team if they're playing dive. She can just do everything. But I hate playing against Kiriko because she can do everything and she cleanses everything. And I don't know. I feel like she probably needs a longer cooldown on uh, Suzu if that's what it's going to be. I think that's all I have. Ogre? Yes. I think Kiriko, why people are so annoyed with Kiriko first, Suzu, obviously. We've talked mm. about it. And I think second of all, what's really annoying about Kiriko is that sometimes you die to her just randomly across the map because she just froze oh, her. Oh, that too. Yeah, I, think I, it's a, to I, I, think her, I don't think her uh, kunai are necessarily broken because it's hard to land, but you can just spam the kunai and just get random kills and it feels good for the Kiriko player, but it's so it's like kind of like Hanzo. It just feels so bad for the people playing against her because you don't feel like you're being outplayed. It just feels like RNG, right? And honestly, it is most of the time RNG. I rarely feel like most Kirikos that throw across the map kunais, they're aiming at anything. They're just shooting in general direction. Like, oh, okay, we got the kills. And that feels really bad. I think it's also in combination with her tiny hitbox. Oh yes. so, like, her you, it's hard is really for a DPS tiny. player to kill her, but it's yeah. easier for her to kill them. That, yes, of course. And um, I, I, as Kark, you said, I think her ult being nerfed is so, like, thank God, because 3x was insane. And uh, I think she's pretty good. Her Suzu is really annoying, in my opinion. I, I, I think she's played here and there, but I, I never feel like, like she's necessarily open. P, I think she's really, really good, of course, but I never feel like sometimes she can carry the fight. But I think, again, it's just this annoying factor of, oh, the Kiriko killed me because she landed two headshots and she mm. never does it throughout the game ever again because she just did it randomly. It's kind of like the Hanzo effect. It's just so annoying. And the Suzu is so annoying as well. And I just hate it. Like, uh, And again, she has two get off jail uh, free cards. You know, That's also really, really annoying and bad. And I don't like that. I think Kiriko is really fun to play. I think it's really unfun to play against Kiriko. Uh, is she OP? I don't know. Like, I'm just I'm just playing Life Weaver. I don't know. I think she's all right. I think she's pretty good. Mm. I don't know if she's OP or not, to be honest. But yeah, that's my yeah. thoughts. Uh, it's mostly a frustration point rather than her being like OP. That's um, how I feel too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I I understand, like, it's true. I do play a lot of Kiriko, and sometimes I'm just spamming my kunais in a choke, and I'm like, oh, I think, oh, think again. Oh, I got one, guys. I got one. Like, there is a lot of moments where I'm like, I'm not actually, like, truly, I'm just aiming in hot spots where I think they're going to stand, and because of the travel time, they can accidentally walk into it, which is very similar to Hanzo. I hate playing against Hanzos for that reason, where it's like they weren't actually even aiming at me, but I actually just died to it because I randomly walked into it. So, yeah, there that's, are other uh, characters, I guess, that I do that too. But yeah. those are also considered frustrating, as we said, with Hanzo or the Zenyatta yeah. right click. At least with the Zenyatta right click, it feels like a little bit fairer because it's like the 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 spread of the right click can mean that you can dodge it. But like the the fire rate of the kunai across the map is like often even hard to react to because by the time you get hit by the first one, the second one's already on on you, and you're like, oh, I'm dead. I mm. I, I didn't obviously catch exactly what all of you said, but to chime in, I I I pretty much hate Kiriko. I I very rarely say the term I hate a character. I don't. I don't feel that way about most characters. Like I know, maybe Hanzo is my other one. Where it's like I fucking hate this guy, the Kiriko, just because I feel like it's really lame. I think just the 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 mechanisms of the hero I feel are really lame, because the flank Kiriko play style feels wrong in many ways. Like I understand when they made Kiriko, they were like, we want to make a hero that the DPS players will enjoy, but to me, it just feels really obnoxious that a support walks into my back line, two taps characters faster than I can kill them. Like, faster than I can kill her, right? Like, which character can match the time to kill uh, of a Kiriko? Then, should I try to punish her? She has first a Suzu that makes her intangible. And if I antenated her or something, if I did something to her, it goes. And then she teleports away into through a wall where I cannot follow. So it I think it's like... interesting if she couldn't Suzu herself. She could only Suzu her team. 
That would be interesting. Because yeah. then she would just have TP as her one free card, I guess. I think Suzu should only cleanse and not make immortal. Or at least, like, one of those two. Like, it's just, both is so annoying. Like, it's, sometimes you almost kill them, they Suzu, they're immortal now. And sometimes you anti-nade them or hit a big ult, and then they just Suzu it, and they're, like, uh, they're standing up again or just playing the game again, like, even though you outplayed them. Like, having both is so annoying. It's just, like, they have more, too. They actually had more. It has healing as well. Yeah, yeah healing. Yeah. Well, like, yes. They got rid of the boop. It still has healing. But healing. I was actually going to say, you I do not think heal. it needs healing at all. I don't think no. it does so many things at once. It's so annoying. Annoying. No, they, the, they, cooldown is, on, the cooldown is honestly not that long. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, yeah. no. I was gonna say they they have to. I think fundamentally they've dodged till now. They have to change one of the features of it. They removed the boop, which was the like dumbest, I guess. Anyways, and made no sense in the first place. But it has to either not make you intangible or invulnerable, right? Like it cannot do everything. It cannot also cleanse and intangible and invulnerable, right? So, some like something has to be change i think for for the frustration to go away because otherwise it's just like the number of times you're just like doing something suzu okay that's it that's the whole thing over second life so i think i think they have they cannot dodge this issue they have to change something if that's the biggest thing then i would say cut the healing and if you're gonna keep the intangible have it even a shorter period because like it's a pretty long like you know when you're when you're when you're milked out, you know, when you're when you're when you're yeah. vulnerable and your whole team is what? white. <laughs> yes, I don't, that's what I used to call it in my head. I'm like, I'm. Or, remember when the game came out? They people call it Bell, or I call it Milk. <laughs> I have heard uh, this. Maybe it's sadly. just me. I was like, I'm milked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, they have a diva bomb, milk me. I did that. I did that in you did that? Okay. all the time, and people were like, what? Like what? Because you people were like, what are you talking about? It's like, I kept. They don't have milk, guys. They they milked me. They have no milk. <laughs> milk. Yeah. But in any case, if you shorten the window of the milky portion, then you have to be more precise with timing it. If you want to counter a diva bomb and you want to suzu your team, it's like a ding, and it's like really quick, a small period, kind of like uh, you know when Cast does the the roll, he has like damage uh, reduction now, so you can tank like a tracer pulse bomb. It's like a really fast animation. You could shorten that period to be like a more skillful, more deliberate there. That's a good idea, actually. Fair enough. I if still you, think if you want to if you want to go the route of keeping that or just gut it all together, but yes. then I don't know. I think people might consider that making Kiriko a little too weak now. But I mean, who knows? You know, it's just yeah. I I I think that's a fair suggestion if they want to keep it. I do think that it's it's just not great to be targeting something and then it goes be, like uh, it's unable to be targeted all of a sudden. And mm -hmm. unlike unlike a Moira Reaper, there's no drawback. Whereas as a you know Moira Reaper, you're not doing anything in that time. Whereas this character can still do things back so yes anyways we shall move on then to life weaver so of course i will ask boger's opinion first boger i really played i yeah? i've played i've been playing a lot of life weaver with ml ml's honestly i've never seen ml so uh surprised and like honestly proud of anyone in my life he's so proud of my life weaver gameplay Aww. he's just i click on his stream he's like boger is the best life weaver player ever and that's really awesome right but um, outside of me just talking about how cool it is for ML to acknowledge me in that way, but um, I think Life Reaver is obviously annoying for many people, but I think there is a big difference between bad and good Life Reaver players. Um, you can do a lot of things on this character, and if you're, like, I feel like you're, I feel like Life Reaver just plays a different game. I feel like he's playing a strategy game most of the time, in the sense that, um, you you can't really be dove on Life Weaver unless you're really silly or the or your team is getting rolled. Like if you're just smart, you never get dove, you never die, uh, and you're just playing somewhere far away and you're just healing, chugging heals out, uh, pulling people. You're like you're thinking about their abilities, their ults. Like uh, you think about the Nano Genji blade that's coming in, so you need to position yourself separately so you can pull the target, and you need to think about their Genji blading you so you need to save your abilities to get out of it and like how are you going to use your tree like his I, I like his kit in the sense that there's a lot of versatility in, in it 
A lot of people are going to complain that he's brainless. I don't think he's brainless. There's a lot of really cool things you can do. Like blocking a Sigma ult with your tree is awesome. Blocking the enemy team using it as a May wall is awesome. Uh, using the tree to block line of sights or stuff like that is also awesome. The pool being used in different ways, either aggressively or defensively. I think that's cool. I think like the platform has so many different ways you can use it either to dodge ults, uh, get to high grounds, uh, enable your teammates or like... I know that it's really annoying for people. Again, I agree that it's really, really annoying when you play against a Life Weaver because there's no counterplay to most of his things. But um, as somebody who plays a lot of Life Weaver, I think it's really chill. I think it's really fun. I think if you uh, also get damage is actually quite a lot if you can aim. Like you can poke a lot, right? You can definitely poke a lot. He's so much better than on release. Uh, I know for a fact he's so much better. Uh, he's fun to play. There's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of, um, I think there's a high skill ceiling and uh, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think they filled in a niche in the sense that a lot of the support characters that were released, most of them just deal a lot of damage and, you know, run around the map and DPS all the time. But Life Fever, he, he's, he has to think a lot about what he does. And if you can counter their ults correctly, if you can land your abilities correctly, you can think, you need to think about LOS, you can get a lot of value. And I think that's awesome. I don't know. I like I like Life Fever. He is annoying in some situations, but I don't know. I enjoy it. Let me enjoy something. <laughs> Emmy, uh, have you found Life Fever to be fair or frustrating? Um, I think he's extremely frustrating to play against right now. I thought obviously he was terrible before this season. Um, but now he's just so hard to kill. Like Boger said, with his um dash and his platform. I've noticed life weavers typically reserve that for themselves a lot of times, and it's it, it makes it nearly impossible to kill him because the cooldowns are short and um, he gets healing from his dash. Um, but I do think he does fit a, a role that wasn't previously filled where you could just heal bot. I mean... I shouldn't say just heal bot, but where you can mostly heal bot <laughs> and also use just strictly utility abilities. You don't have to focus on damaging and healing your team and using your utility abilities. I think he just fit like a, a specific type of support that people have been wanting to play or s some people have been wanting to play. Sorry, yeah. Boger. He's not a heal bot. <laughs> it's actually support not healer yeah, I think yeah, one thing that's really broken about Life Reaver is the support passive plus his shield regen plus his dash you can't kill him like, yeah that's mm -hmm. what I'm you, saying you, I, you, that's you, why I think he's yeah. frustrating you hop on a platform you dash away like two seconds pass your uh, passive healing and then the shield gen you're insta full HP like instantly and then he has short cooldowns yeah, it's just his, so, so like I feel like maybe they should change him a bit in the sense that he should be more diveable because I don't think he's really diveable he's just playing the game somewhere in Narnia in Horizon Lunar Colony you can't reach him ever unless he's playing badly and uh, he can just you know fix all of his teammates mistakes right but again like there's a lot of risk that isn't really that much risk reward, but like if you if you if you are silly, with, I mean, if you make a mistake with your platform or your pool, you're just gonna lose the fight straight up. Like if you make a bad pool, just that's it. Like uh, I don't you, feel that way about platform though, because maybe platform not. Has a quick cool yeah, down. platform. Yeah, of course, but like uh, you can still bad screw pool up for your sure. Yeah, bad pool can ruin the game, like oh, the yeah. fight and everything. Like it can just like you can straight up lose. In that sense, maybe it's risk reward. I don't think so. It's, it's easy not to fuck it, but like you can. No, you that's because can... you're a good player. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah. You know, if you don't understand the game for a second, yeah, yeah. yeah that's because you're I... good. But like, uh, there's been I, I don't know I I think I think the the, the I think the grip does 100 percent mess mess up the entire game if you just if you're not you said it's hard to mess up, but I think it's very easy to mess up. You have to read the game well, but you know how to read the game, so it's different. And for you. one bad pull makes everybody on your team mad at you. Oh no! <laughs> yes. For like and the I, rest of the game, bro, you don't understand. I I always go like I sometimes misclick and people I, and I instantly sorry sorry I'm so sorry it was a mistake yeah. it was a misclick misclick like Emo like he literally talked to me he's like you gotta stop apologizing I was like bro you don't understand <laughs> people just throw my games instantly yep. after that they're like swap yeah. swap swap. Yes, there's definitely the yeah. I mean, I felt that because I remember I playing Life Hero on launch and like people just like you can have like eight good pulls in a row and then the one good pull that you pull some guy and he's like, I was going to slam right there. It's like I didn't fucking know you were 10 HP, bro. Yeah. I, I don't give a shit. But yeah, so 
I think that they overtuned him a little bit. I think with the healing numbers, I think is, I think that's where the brainless accusations come in. Because I was like one of the biggest life of defenders on launch, right? I was like, I, you guys have not tapped the potential this hero. We gotta wait. There's gonna there's gonna be a lot more depth behind this. Clearly, we people have already started to figure out things like, well, you know, the platform works like this, and the pull can work like this. The platform can counter these ults. But they buffed too many elements, I think, of of his kit. the The tree is now ridiculous. Like the tree in a fight is and like this fight. He gets yeah, hit. okay. It's, Let me it's a busted rally. Tree. Yes. Yeah, but you can break it really fast. Like ninety percent of the comms, like in high elos or whatever, it's kind of like Maywall in the sense that if the enemy team is actually smart, my tree just dies instantly. Like especially if there's a Bastion, a Reaper, or whatever, you know, it just breaks instantly. It's so yeah, but it's like yeah. it's already will have given its value at that point. Like if you drop tree, you heal everybody up to full, and the time they kill it, that's damage they're not doing to your team while your team has time to regen and do damage to them. So even if it dies within five, like two seconds, it's done its job, and often it doesn't. So I think it's like I think it's far vastly overtuned. Um, I the think only thing that kills it that fast is Bastion a lot of times. I, feel. I, I disagree. I, I feel like if you play a lot of life here, you gotta... I mean, I I don't disagree with SVB, but I disagree with that only Bastion can kill him. Cause no, I thousand... shouldn't say only Bastion, but I feel like Bastion is the I, uh, primary I one that makes it die fast. It makes it really die fast, if, but if the enemy team, like, it doesn't... Again, this is my... Uh, biased view of the game because I play on a different level than most people. I'm sorry, that might sound egoistical, but it's true. But wow. but Skill a lot issues. of the times, yeah, that? But what what happens is like people go focus tree, focus tree, and the tree dies instantly. It doesn't matter what comp you are. Like if you have like a tracer, even like a a Baptiste, a, a Zen, or whatever, it just dies instantly. Especially if there's a Bastion. Right. Still, I th so that's a fair point. But I still think that, and I think with the healed numbers that they tuned up as well, it's just like. I have this kind of feeling because because so, the dev blog re one of the dev blogs recently said that basically the highest healing outputs are Life Weaver and Mercy at the moment, right? Like the in terms of the raw numbers that they're seeing, these are the supports that are doing the most healing. That's something's really wrong, I think, if that's the case because these are both single target healers who don't require aim, and I I don't have anything against not requiring aim for a hero. I think there should be, and again, that's why I was a big defender of Life Weaver because I think. There's a real skill to, to requiring a support that doesn't just you know that doesn't just have to aim like the, the utility is the pulling and the the tactical manipulation of the fight. But what that encourages is that's what the, that's where the brainless accusations come because this is a, this now becomes a support where it's like you just hold M1 and things don't die and that's where people start getting frustrated. They're like nothing dies. Well, yeah, because this character you just hold the button. And spams, this one target you're trying to kill will never die. And again, this is compounding factors of a game where we're trying to make it about solo play, about a game where like you feel autonomous and you can go and kill stuff. No, you can't. Because again, these these heroes, they, they, they will not let this thing die. And there's nothing really required for them to do. You know, SK would say like, you're asleep at the monitor and this character will not die. So I think like, I really want Life Weaver to be good. I'm a huge fan of Life Weaver. But I think that cannot come in the form of just raw healing output, that this guy will just heal more than anyone else. That's like something's wrong. So I think they need to think about that a little bit. I'm glad they buffed him into some form, some form of viability, but it feels a little bit obnoxious. Uh, also think they should probably consider where he can yoink. I think one of the annoying things is when you yoink someone out of like a grab or something or like a Sigma ult. This feels a little bit annoying, but... I think... I, I, I like think that. that <laughs> I, I, I like that. I think it's okay, but like... I wish there was some counterplay or maybe make the cooldown bigger, like longer. I think it's really short. Um, Mercy can res every 30 seconds. People still are annoyed. I think Life Weaver Pool is a better Mercy res. It might be a hot opinion here, but like genuinely believe Life Weaver Pool is... 100% in every situation better than res. You can't change my mind about it. You can pull <laughs> people across the map. You don't need to be next to it. You don't That's because like, it also you, heals. Yeah, too. It yeah, also heals. Wait, HP at now. first it heals, much lower cooldown, uh, much longer distance. It's instant, and the person doesn't even die in the first place. Uh, like, Life Weaver pull I, uh, is so much better than Mercy res. I think Life Weaver pull might need to get a longer cooldown. So there's a bigger risk in using it, and you can't just spam it all the time because you, you kind of can't spam it a lot now. That's fair. I think that's a fair compromise. I'd be all right with that. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts, Karku, on on Life Weaver? 
Yeah, if they're not trolling with the pull, it is a good ability, of course. Um, I do think... I actually agree with the SVB saying, like, you get the value instantly when you put the tree down, because it's 100 instant HP the moment you put it down, which can save your life, and you can use the tree as, like, a body. Oh, yeah, of course. I think life reverts... And, and even if they're not low, good. even if they're yeah. not low, it's now, like, a budget rally, right? You just get over health. Yeah, health. it is. It so is. Even I if think it's full... pretty good, the tree. I think it's in pretty fact, good. In fact, I say budget uh, rally, it's better than rally. Like in, It in, is better in... than rally. It is. Yeah. Yeah, but I think... Still, I, I'm a fan of Life Weaver. All said and done, I think he's a he's a cool hero. So same. I also think the whole like you know, well, you control with him, but I think there's like at at a good level, which 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 support can you just play and not be trolling if you're just like, because I because I've I played with Life Weavers or like I'm I was playing Tracy the other day and Life Weaver kept pulling me and I'm like, bro, you have no idea how my hero works. Stop, like just stop. You're literally I had ruining. Do that to me on Sombra. I was you're like, I'm yes. Sombra. <laughs> oh, I had that too. Yeah, I had that too. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm on. So I'm, I'm on this mega. I'm waiting for it to. You're fucking pulling me. Like so, it's like <laughs> sometimes that happens. But I think like that person is so stupid that no matter what character you put them on, they would fail. Yeah. So it's like that's universal. I think so. As long as you're vaguely competent and you understand the vague flow of a fight, it it's hard to fuck up the pull. Um, okay. Let's move on then to Lucio. So, uh, Frogger was here earlier and, and taking some heat because apparently he lied to me about Reddit Lucioing. Um, he says worse hero in the game in chat. I'm obviously now inclined to never believe another word he says. Um, let's go with Karku. Karku, how do you feel about Lucio? I think Lucio is really good still. Um, if you're competent, he's, uh, you know. He's got a flexible play style. You can choose between if you're playing with Brawl and uh, you play for your team. And if things aren't working, you if you have good wall ride mechanics, you can do your own thing and annoy the shit out of snipers. I don't think there's a single uh, Widow player that would also be like, like super annoyed. Or even actually as a support player, where like sometimes like this Lucio is just dancing so annoyingly and just poking me in the back line. It is super annoying but then i'm like okay i respect it because like they've they like spend a thousand hours on lucio rollout custom games and you know not everybody can do that <clears throat> but i don't know i think i think lucio's fine i don't actually have any problems with him to be honest with you like his ttk is slow green oreos like if they i'm actually very impressed if they can like predict me and then choo -choo -choo four shot into a boot melee and i just die in one blow i'm like hmm you're like, Dang. No, that's hard to do. That's hard to do. It really is hard to do. And, uh, you know, having good wall ride mechanics and good boop timing. Like, I think when we watch the Overwatch League, they, um, when they play against the Dragon Blade, it's like the perfect boop at the right time. Or, like, when Drucker Queen's about to go for the Carnage Act, they always get booped at the right time. Like, I can respect good Lucios for sure. Um, yeah, I have, no, I have no issue with them. And his alt is slow to build if, like, you're not. If you're focused on speed and everything, then you will build your ult really slow. But I will say, like, amping heal is actually pretty good, too. Because if a lot of people misuse the speed, it's like, using speed's good at high elos, and if not everyone's on the same page in low elos, like, amping heals is actually pretty strong, in my opinion. Well, again, if Anyways. I were to trust the advice of the now untrustworthy uh, Frogger, he was, you know, he was like, amp heal, man. It, it just heal bot and amp heal. Like, build your ult, and then play around beat. So I think the that part is still good. I don't think people have clocked on. But Emmy, you were nodding. You feel like he's he's cool, he's good? I think Lucio is one of the only supports that doesn't get complained about. <laughs> I think he's just a good hero. And um, I mean, I don't play Lucio, so I don't know how bad he is right now. But he seems good. Um, like higher elo especially benefits from speed boost, obviously. Um, lower elo does not because they're not coordinated. Um, and I think his boop is fun and interactive. I agree with CarQ that when I die to a Lucio, it's literally just skill issue. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have to be good at the character to kill me. Yeah, I'm glad Boger is now back up because slowly he was descending lower and lower down the camera. <laughs> he start, started as a bingus, then he was just ahead. But now you're back. There's a, there's one thing I keep hearing, Boger, which is that like, or people at least say this to in my chat a lot, it's like, well, yeah, Lucio, you know, I see him played in Owl a lot, but it's fucking useless in rank. Like, I, I never get, like, I, I never get any value out of Lucio. Do you think, like, he's bad in ranked? I I, I would disagree with both Emmy and Karq. I think 90% of the time when I see a Lucio in my team, and it's not FT God, Frogger, SK, or Funny Astro, I know I'm going to lose the game. Uh, straight up. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, straight up. If, unless it's, like, five predetermined Lucio players, I know I'm losing the game. These, like, Lucio is so hard to play. Like, so hard to play. Like, 
you have to be so good on Lucio. Like, outside of, you know, when he's good, when he's meta, like, when you just have to be a speed bot and a heal bot, it's whatever. But right now, Lucio is so difficult to play and get value from, I genuinely feel like you're throwing if you pick Lucio in my game. Like, it is so horrible. Like, unless you're, you know how to play the game. A good Lucio is so inspiring. Like, he, he knows how to PO. He's like Brig, but better in a way. Like, he knows how to PO. He boosts people. You, he He's so, like, a good Lucio is so smart with keeping his team alive. Like, you can really see it, and it's really impressive, and it's really awesome. And, like, them spinning around and hitting the shots, that's really difficult. But 99% of Lucio players cannot do that. And 99% of Lucio players suck at the game and just pick something else. Just pick something that deals a lot of damage while you're sitting AFK. I don't want Lucio players in my game. I like <laughs> Lucio is just be good if your team knows how to play the game together. But it's ranked. Nobody knows how to play the game yeah. together. Everyone's just running around aimlessly, especially now with all of these characters that are solo oriented. There is no point in Lucio when nobody's stacked up to push together. You call out to push in together, to take space together. Nobody's going to listen. It's going to be scuffed. You're going to make mistakes. Lucio's not going to speed when needed. I don't even try it. It's so obnoxious to try to even do that. I just like kind of hold the Lucio swaps because I know he's going to feed the game. Uh, there's no point playing Lucio most of the time, in my opinion he's really fun it's it's always fair to play against him it's never it never feels unfair uh, but i i disagree that he's good in ranked i think he's really good in team play i think he's really good and maybe in lower elos if you're like really good on lucio and you're like a god gamer and you're running around you can climb with it but at that point just play something else you know just play just play just play not at that elo play yeah just yeah just yeah, just, yeah exactly just play more or something if you want to like climb out of these elos and in high elo like where is Lucio good? Kings Row and some other rush map. Like 90% of the maps he's just bad. Like if, if I have a Lucio in Havana, I, I'm i just leaving the game. There's no point <laughs> playing even. There's no yeah. point playing that game this, even. This is again, I think where the role discrepancy, because I, I I know exactly where Boger is coming from. Because like when you play tank, it's so different when you're playing support and you're like, this is my other support versus when you're playing tank and you see someone lock a support. I think that's where these discrepancies come. Because Bulger's right. Although he, the way he described a good Lucio was like some sort of out of some like good housekeeping book where it's like a good wife will will be, will be keeping her home tidy. It's like a good Lucio will be there for you. He'll peel for you, but he'll also do damage. He'll look really handsome. He'll kiss you good night. It's true. Like, it's true. Have it's, you played against? No, no, you no. I know exactly yeah, what you're true. talking about. It's it's it's. I think Lucio suffers from the ball and doom problem where it's like you never see a good player on this hero because the good players are like 1%. It takes forever to grind and practice this hero and they've all climbed to the highest level, right? That's it. Like, that's it. There's very little in between because there's not a, he's not a hero. As much as Kark, you may shit talk my Lucio. It's not a hero you can just hop into and start wall riding into, into you know, all these tricks and whatever, right? It's like, it can't just pick it up in a week, my guy. Um, mm -hmm. so, so you're just like, Either you're playing the hero at half level already by default because you're not familiar with the intricate mechanics, or there's no point, right? Otherwise, like just switch over, or you're spending your whole time one trick. Yeah, uh, I think he's really good in flashpoint still in a lot of cough maps. Yeah, because so. it's really big the map, and I think cough mask is also good. But there's another fact about Lucio which doesn't really happen that often with other supports. Like when I play Life Weaver, I don't care what my other support is. But when I have a Lucio, you, your other support needs to be like a certain set of supports. Because if you have Lucio Zen, you're losing. Lucio Moira, uh, no, not Moira, Mo Lucio Mercy, Mercy you're losing. Uh, I, Lucio Life Weaver, I don't like either. Honestly, I, I think I'm losing that game as well if I have a Lucio as well. And uh, like, there are certain supports that fit with Lucio and certain supports that don't fit. You can't just pick Lucio and hope the other person picks the correct support. Because a lot of the times you might just lose the game from that. I mean that's true of other characters though too. But, but yes, no, like, I agree. Uh, Anna, Anna goes well with everything. Yeah, you pick like, Anna, you're okay, fine. Well, well, you pick Bap, yeah, you're fine. Like, Bap, Bap is everything. Zen? Yeah, you Zen kick Kiriko, is... you're fine. But Zen is good with every hero except Lucian. Like depends on the map. Depends on the map. Yeah, like I, again, I don't know map. Again, Zen is just not that good at the moment, anyways. But. Like when he's really good, he's just good with most heroes, anyways. Like, but with Lucio, it's just you know. He is Fro the most dependent, I think, on the other supports. Then Fro Frogger says, uh, 
Lucio doesn't nah Lucio doesn't need a buff. It's just all the other supports can do what he does. Ten oh, yeah, I agree. I don't think here. Lucio needs a I don't think Lucio needs a buff, don't get me wrong. I definitely don't. I think it's just not his meta right now, or at least like he's always been in this spot. Like it's just Lucio, you know. Lucio's really cool and he's like kinda like Winston. I, I don't think Winston needs a buff just because he's not meta right now. I think it's just the meta is like it doesn't fit him and that's it. Like eventually it's gonna fit him again, it's gonna be really good and it's gonna mm -hmm. be really fun. But I, if you start buffing these characters when the meta doesn't fit them, then power creep happens and they become annoying. Just leave him. A hero doesn't have to be always meta. It's okay for the hero to be sometimes okay or only okay in the hands of good players. Yes, I think that's yeah, a I mean, very... with 37 heroes or whatever, like there's no way. If everyone's meta, then like that doesn't make sense, you know? I also hate the uh, let's arbitrarily buff someone into the meta philosophy. Like I just it fundamentally disagree with the well, this season it's Bastion season. This season it's X season. Like, please, no. Not all heroes have to be meta. Let's just, like, keep a semblance of sanity about how the hero works internally and then the wider external, like, metas and other people being good or bad can can change things on its own. Uh, and you never know. Maybe maybe next, not well, not next season now, but the next season when we get a new hero, maybe that will be Lucio favorite. If it's a new tank that favors Lucio, maybe Lucio becomes good all of a sudden, so. Or maybe Hog. I actually gonna forgot to mention this in the Kiriko section, but when they rework Hog, Kiriko might just come back in a big way, because the whole one of the whole benefits of Kiriko back then was it was Hog, Soldier, and Widow meta, and Kiriko just chased the Hog around and cleansed him every five seconds when Ana tried to nade him, and now he's unstoppable. Hmm? But I said it might change with Sombra too, if Sombra becomes meta. Yes, true. So you never know what might change just out of the fact of these other reworks or buffs coming. So let us see. That leaves... No, we got everyone. I think Lucio was the last one. We talked more Mercy, more and Zenyatta. So Lucio was the last one. So I guess we head over to some bigger picture concluding thoughts then, guys. Next season, like we said, they, are, they said they're, they've earmarked some changes. Uh, we got Sombra rework, Virus. Uh, eventually a hog rework. What do we think is going to be the future of the state of supports? And if anything, does anything need to change? So I'll go to Karku first. Uh, three seconds support passive. That's just my, that's like my biggest thing. And then the individual changes I mentioned. That's yeah, the, my concluding, the, concluding takeaway of everything. The Karku patch, as we call it, with yeah. the math changes. Okay. Yeah, the map changes I listed earlier, yeah. Short and sweet, I like that. Uh, Emmy, what do you think? Yeah, I, uh, I think the support passive is too much. I think it's all, maybe not always, but I think it's been too much for a while. And for whatever reason, they just have never addressed it fully. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there's like minor changes with uh, specific characters that um, could make them feel better to play against. But Overall, I think there's just going to be abilities that are unfun to play against, and it's just how it's going to be. Okay, and you don't you don't really feel like supports are fundamentally busted or anything like, you know, overpowered. I think supports have some of the best abilities in the game, but I don't think they're OP because I think they can still be outside of Suzu. <laughs> I should say I still think they can be countered and. Um, worked around that's fair boger the the role flexer you foresee I mean, yourself playing mostly support or tank i mean i i don't see you know a world where i'm gonna be queuing up tank with bastion running around melting me all the time like support is fun support is chill i think support passive needs to change as we said i think certain supports need some changes as well because it's just so annoying but like Again, what's really just obnoxious is that you can just stack all of these, you know, uh, get off jail free cards, you know, Bap Lamp, Suzu Cleanse, uh, Bap Shift. Uh, like, Tank is annoying when Tank can play the game because he's really, like, the Tank is really good. He's like, he can solo the entire team when, when that happens, when you don't counter him. But, like, there's one Tank. If you counter him, that's it, right? But with support, there's two supports, and it's really hard to pick one hero and counter supports, it's really hard to, like, even 1v1 supports most of the time, right? And uh, I like support in the sense that it's fun to play. I don't like, I don't, like, I, I think a lot of people blow things out of proportion for a lot of the supports. 
uh, the changes we discussed for Kirikou, the changes we discussed for Baptiste, I had support passive, I think they should be implemented. And um, I don't know, I, I just, I, I like support. I like having fun support. And I think support will still be fun even if they make these changes. I think support is going to be ruined. A lot of support players are crying that, oh, don't do it. They're going to, support is going to be useless. It's not going to be useless. It's still going to be fun. Like just, just remove certain things or change some things and it's still going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be things that are annoying to play against, no matter what. I don't like playing against Diva Defense Matrix. I don't like playing against. <laughs> Same. I you know, hate Arissa defense rotating her so fortify. Oh, she's gold. Oh, now she's spinning. Oh, she popped her ult and she's gold again. Oh, now she's gold. And oh, I got speared across the map. Like, there's. It's always annoying from a certain POV. Like, for supports, it's annoying to deal with a Orisa, but then for an Orisa, it's annoying to deal with a Symmetra Bastion Zen. Like, it's just mm. the game. Like, any game, game is like that. It's Agreed. just whatever. Yeah. Like, just change some things. Freshen up things and just add some other, like just add a DPS passive. The DPS, yes. there's no DPS passive. Please just add something or remove passives. I was going to say, or get rid of, just get rid of I them. Think, I think get rid of passives. That's my agenda. And now we'll see what they have next week to say on the DPS debate. I think, I think the support role is the benchmark of how other roles should be approached in the sense that I think that support feels the way Overwatch 2 is supposed to feel, which That's is that, like great I said, way to put it. Which is the way, like I said, when I pl I've been playing all three roles recently, and whenever I play support, I come out of every game, even whether I win or lose, I'm like, yeah, I could have done this, I could have done that. This is this this moment would have changed the fight. When I play DPS, sometimes it's just like I think it's also exacerbated by the current meta state, which is a symptom of some really sh like short-minded thinking on the developer side. I just fundamentally disagree with some of their their approaches of like win rate pick rate balancing and they're like arbitrary shove someone into the meta balancing where it's like again it's like bash and torb i always find that the, you know in, in a game in, in any video game like it is the nature of the vast community to try and default to the brainless most brainless thing that's just how it is right like you want to find the easiest value right the problem is when the easiest value is also the best value which is where we're at right now which is like i'm sure all of us have been in games you win the first couple fights and before you realize it, you're up against Orisa, Bastion, Torb, you know, like whatever, like everything that just spams crap at your face and all the nuance of the game is removed. And I think that that's where the problems lie. That's when the game starts becoming frustrating. That's when as a DPS, for example, I'm just like, this is so stupid. I cannot go anywhere without like a Torb turret smacking me with a Bastion hitting me. And as Tank already discussed in the last debate, it's just like, you just feel like a lot of your value is denied. And again, I've been in games of like, literally dropping like you know you can play near perfect where you're like i made one key mistake in this entire game and that that's like the only thing you can take away in the game to be like wow i guess the one time i wasn't killing three people i lost that game shit i guess i should have just killed them every single fight right so i think that's the difference i i think every person should be able to come away and be like oh i had the game in my hand like i had the power to change that game so i i think and th i think it's doable because we discussed, for example, Batiste is a great benchmark, again, to be like, I love playing BAP. Whenever I go into any game as BAP, uh, apart from certain comps or something where he just doesn't work, most of the time I'm like, shit, I could have I could have done this. And if they took away the burst heal of the of the shift, that wouldn't change my feeling, as, as Kark, you kind of suggested. It wouldn't change my sentiment of afterwards of being like, man, I could have really won that game as BAP. If I had the 100 shift, though, I would have definitely won, right? That's not part of the equation. It's because I can do so much for myself so yeah i hope they look at they've done so let's commend the devs in that they've taken support from a place where in the betas people were unhappy to play support to now everyone's delighted to play support at least if the queue times are going to go by so good job there now we need to kind of bring that level to the other roles so that uh, yeah the ideal should be that everyone comes away feeling like yeah i could have won that game so on that note thank you very much guys for joining me today i appreciate so much thank your time you. and company uh, as always, please show these guys some love. All their socials are in uh, the commands and they'll be there on YouTube. So thank you very much. Uh, CarQ, Boger, MLI, and we wish the best for SK. We we hope she recovers ASAP. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here. I would have loved more of her opinions, uh, but we'll have to try and get them when we can. Next week, we got the great DPS debate, or hopefully next week, we got the great DPS debate. And for this stream now, I'm going to go play some League of Legends. So uh, thank you, guys. Base. Have fun. Uh, thank Base you, guys. Karku, Boger, Emmy. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye. Peace Bye. Peace.